More than any other club in the elite, Crystal Palace have a chance of recording their highest ever Premier League finish this season. Whilst Norwich's top six finish and appointment of an ambitious new boss could be seen as good portents for their championship campaign ahead. The player sales have hit both of them hard. They haven't won a league game between them as yet. So who can get some Carabao Cup solace tonight? This is the first time since 2017 that the Eagles have lost their opening two matches of a Premier League season. Crystal Palace nil, West Ham 2. If you start with two defeats, it's important to be closer to next to each other, to, to, to be together. Norwich 1, Sheffield United 1. Norwich are still awaiting their first league win of the season after consecutive draws at Carrow Road. It's important for us to use all the games we have at the moment to, to keep on building and, and keep on improving and developing in the way we want to we want to develop. Mateta Sajid's draw! What an incredible finish! Jean-Philippe Mateta! It's now up to us. Keep calm, keep going, working, focus on the details. Sajid into the area! 1-0 to Norwich! We used that game on Tuesday night against a, a strong side to, to make sure that we can uh, that we can take another step in, uh, in the direction that we want to. Good evening from Jim Bradford and the former Chelsea defender Scott Minto at Selhurst Park where team selection has given an insight into Oliver Glasner's way of thinking. While several Premier League clubs are expected to make a raft of changes for their first League Cup tie, Palace have made only four. Klein in for Richards, the Corey and Hughes replacing Lerma and Wharton in central midfield and Kamada returns in place of Edouard. So the likes of Gehi and Eza and Mateta all starting for the Eagles tonight, Scott. Yeah, it's a very strong side, Jim, of that. There's no doubt. I think Oliver Glasner, one, is thinking, look, we need to get a win, whether it be in the league or the cup, under our belts at the start of the season. And two, I think he wants to set the tone still for all the players and who are perhaps not quite 100% fit. I was here at Sellers Park on, Park on Saturday. Didn't think they played that bad. Just West Ham were clinical. But absolutely, Mark Gerhi. He may or may not be on the verge of a £70 million move to Newcastle, but he plays. So too Mitchell and Munoz out wide. Eze and Camada as the two number 10s and John philippe Mateta up front. This is a strong Palace side. Yeah, this is the team in full. Henderson in goal. Klein, Gehi and Riyad. Munoz, Decore, Hughes, who missed the weekend game through illness, and Mitchell. Camada on his full home debut alongside Eze behind Mateta. And there are seven changes for Norwich who give a full debut to Panamanian centre-half Jose Cordoba and just a second start for both teenage Scottish winger Gabe Forsyth and Antti Sienach, who started on the wing of the weekend but who moves up front tonight. So it's long in goal. Fisher, Hanley, Cordoba and Chris Enney. Gibbs, Nunez and Forson. For Scythe, Sienach, and Ole Hernandez. Yeah, interesting. Uh, the new man, of course, Johannes Hoff, threw up, decided to make seven changes from the week. And look, you would think on paper this is a very much a strong Palace side against a team that's made lots of changes and they're still struggling to sort of find themselves in the new style under the new manager as well. But you just never know. They've got nothing to lose here, Norwich. So you're not expecting them to do too much in the championship this season. This may be seen as a transitional one. In terms of tonight, you would expect Palace to win, but you never know in cup games, do you? Well, we'll look at Norwich in depth in a few minutes' time. Let's start by looking at Palace. You see, this is a, a great chance for them to get some confidence and momentum, or can that only really be garnered by the first team winning games in the league? No, winning games is winning games, Jim. And don't get me wrong, of course you want to be winning in the Premier League, if that is no doubt, and get yourself away. Well, first of all, get points on the board in the Premier League, and then get away from the relegation zone, start looking up, try and think of top half, and then see what happens after that. But no, a win is a win is a win. So that's what Palace need to do at the moment. As I say, their, their performance wasn't that bad on Saturday. They just weren't clinical enough up front. Now they need to make sure they are against what is a, a championship side and arguably a championship reserve side. Uh, Mark Gahey's future has certainly been the subject of a lot of speculation. How much of a distraction do you think that will have been? Well, they're, they're expecting Palace a fifth bid for Newcastle, which would be the region of £70, £75 million. Pounds. What's it like as a player within the dressing room when you're not sure if other players are staying or going? What's it like for Mark himself playing tonight, getting himself cup-tied essentially, 
not knowing who he's going to be registered for at the weekend? Yeah, look, I mean, I, I think he was arguably probably our, our best player in the Euros for, for England. So I think he had a, a brilliant Euros. I think the first game of the season, maybe head-wise, maybe even fitness-wise a little bit. He was just getting used to things and, and wasn't quite his normal self. Again, I repeat, I was here on Saturday and I thought he played really well, especially in the first half. Mentally, look, he could easily turn around and say, I I'm not I'm not up for this, Jim. I, 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 I need to just hold off and not play tonight. So close to the transfer window. And of course, he knows if he gets injured, then, you know, it may not happen. But full credit to him for being an absolute pro in that sense. From a club point of view, from a Palace point of view, they're saying they're making a statement to Newcastle. Don't care. Until you meet that bid that we want, not only is he a Palace player, but he's going to be playing. He's our captain. He's going to be playing as much as possible. I am surprised to see him play tonight. But again, I think it's a statement from Palace. Well, let's hear now from Oliver Glasner. Um, Palace have begun the new season with back-to-back -back defeats in the Premier League, as you heard, for the first time since 2017. Uh, but the Austrians not concerned just yet about their start of the campaign. Yes, I had this picture I told here when we were smiling, he said we're flying on a cloud and it's so, it's so sunny up there. But this happened after very hard work, so because I also remember the times and, and I'm not, I try not to be too emotional. We started with a win against Burnley, but then six games without the win. And, and it was, we were asked, I remember before then, and it was, ah, now you play at Liverpool, uh, the City, West Ham, Newcastle, all the big teams. Oh, are you uh, worried about relegation? But we didn't think about the table. We, we didn't think uh, about the results. We were just hard working on the pitch. And then we got the results. And I think this is what, uh, what's important now for all of us, not dreaming of what has been three months ago, not dreaming of maybe what will be in a few months, being in the present, don't talk about who left us, don't talk about who will come. So, and, and so it's now up to us, keep calm, keep going, working, focus on the details, don't be too disappointed. Yes, I think we, we all sleep uh, really very bad tonight, but tomorrow is uh, yeah, sunrise will happen. Well, as the old adage goes, it's the mark of any good football manager that you never let the highs get you too high, you never let the lows get you too low, and Oliver Glasner clearly subscribes to that. It has been difficult for him, though. He's lost Michael Elise, Joachim Anderson and Jordan Ayew so far. Gay potentially following. Always speculation about Aberachieza as well. Now, they've never finished in the top nine of the Premier League. Their run of six wins in seven games at the end of last season suggested that that could be on the cards, and they are set to sign Arsenal's Eddie and Ketia in a £30 million deal. That's divided opinion, that transfer fee for Eddie and Ketty. Which uh, side of the Between fence? ourselves. Well, yeah, I think it's, I must admit, I think it's a lot of money for a man who scored 18 Premier League goals in 116 games, albeit it's certainly not 116 starts. You can look at it another way. They're spending £30 million on a player who's never started more than 10 Premier League games in a season, never scored more than five Premier League goals in a campaign. You, though, I know, think it's a good bit of business for Palace. Do you know what? I think the bottom line is, do I think, one, he's a good finisher? Yes. Do I think, two, he will add to Crystal Palace? Yes. Do I also think he'll have a point to prove, you know, to himself as well as Arsenal Football Club? And I think, OK, some may say that's a lot of money, but if you're talking about Mark Gerhi for more than double that, two and a half times that, then surely Eddie Nketi is worth 30 million. And if he can sort of score the goals to take Palace to sort of mid-table, and I think to try and better what they did last season, 10th, considering how well they finished with the players that they had as well, at least they gone, Anderson gone, we'll wait and see what happens with, with Eze, although I don't think he's going to go, but certainly with Mark Gerhi. I think Eddie Nketiah would be a fantastic signing, almost to take them away from the relegation worries, because uh, I don't think they're going to go for top 10. I don't think there'll be a top 10 table uh, team because they've lost the players they've lost. But I do worry for them in terms of scoring goals, and I think he can add that. Now, briefly, before we, we get our latest odds update, Glasner's wedded to a 3-4-2-1 formation. Mateta's got 13 goals in 15 games under Glasner, so... Is Nketiah coming here in a £30 million deal to play second fiddle? 
I wouldn't say that, but what I would say is that Glasner's probably saying to them, right, let's watch you in training. Let's see who is going to be the best striker. I mean, you look at Mateta and you, you talk about those stats. Those stats almost came from nowhere at the end of last season. Is he capable of keeping that up? Is he capable of doing that throughout the whole season? And even if he is, then it's about strength in depth. Now, Eddie Nketi is not going to want to leave the Arsenal bench for the Crystal Palace bench. But he'll still need to prove to his manager that he should be the man to be that first choice because you're absolutely right in the system that Glasner plays there's only one striker uh, well we're expecting that and Kenny deal will be confirmed very shortly clearly not featuring tonight strong palace side it's time now for an odds update with william hill in the zone on talk sport 2 with official betting partner william hill get epic value all season with william hill 18 plus be gambleaware.org and it's a very good evening to Lee Phelps uh, from here at Selhurst Park. Lee, how are Hills pricing this one up tonight? Yeah, well, Palace are justifiably really short price favourites here. 2-11, to 11, the draw 11-2, to two, and Norwich 16-1, to 1-6, one, 16-1. One, six, Look, we're always looking out for team news ahead of these games. So, you know, bookies are always a little nervous about what prices you can put out. But, you know, Palace, I think Palace looks strong up top. You guys have just been talking about it. You know, Mateta, you could could get a few here he's shown in Paris you guys have just been talking about what he was like at the end of last season um, you know you, you'd have to expect that some of that back line when Norwich will have a tough a tough night as a obviously you know this is you know the, beneath the level that he's used to playing uh, you've got you know the young lad who's you know barely played you know he plays comes on a sub plays in the uh, the youth team Kellen Fisher could have a torrid night tonight but Palace haven't been scoring the goals like you said so it's how far do you go with them because you don't want to be backing them at 2 to 11 um, look I think you know you, may, you might want to look at you know Crystal Palace to win and both teams to score Norwich have got the capability of scoring goals they haven't had a great start to the championship but have been scoring Crystal Palace to win and both teams to score is 17 to 10 which is a lot nicer than 2 to 11 in my book if you're looking for goal scorers and there are bet builders available on this as well 25% boost if you do it online or on the app uh, Mateta is odds on to score at any time 13 to 20 it's 11 to 4 to score first he's 100 to 30 to get two or more and if you fancy a hat trick 12 to 1 uh, Eze is still odds on to score any time here but he's 16 to 5 to score first uh, Daichi Kamada he's 11 to 8 to score any time and just to give you a couple on the uh, on the on the Norwich side Onel Hernandez I know it was against Stevenage but he did get a couple in the previous round he's 11 to 2 to score at any time in this game so if you're looking for a what I think will be a consolation for Norwich he might be the man Onel Hernandez 11 to 2 to score at any time in the game OK Lee we'll leave it there that was today's odds update with William Hill get epic value all season with William Hill 18 plus be gambleaware.org in the zone on talk sport 2 with official betting partner William Hill giving you the tools for positive play take time to think and know your limits 18 plus be gambleaware.org uh, so it's no surprise that Norwich are the outsiders let's hear from their manager Johannes Hothorup who's been speaking with talk sports Mike Sewell just looking ahead to Tuesday night change of tack away from the league it is an opportunity isn't it the pressure is on them the pressure is not on you no and we look mostly uh, at ourselves that, that's, that's what it's all about we look at how we can perform we look at how we can step into a game on a Tuesday night and make sure that we can get everything out of it what they will do in terms of, of changes in the squad we have no idea so we just focus on, on our business is it slightly frustrating having to go into a cup competition when you're trying to get things going in the league no 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 no, no. I, I flip it around I also told the players in here that uh, that it's important for us to use all the games we have at the moment to, to keep on building and, and keep on improving and developing in the way we want to we wanna develop. So it's another important game for us and, and we go there to see if we can, uh, we, can, we can play the game that we want to with all, with all respect for, for, the, for the opposition because we know it's a strong team no matter who they will play with. So of course there will also be moments in the game where we have to defend but I think it's, it's worthwhile for us at the moment to, give these, or, or to have these experiences. And you've probably learned that this competition, the League Cup, is one that Norwich have won twice. I know a long, a long, long time before you were born. <laughs> so you're talking about us in the final now this season? No, no, I just think it, it has a history here. Everything has a history here. It's a, it's a fantastic place to be. It's a fantastic country in, in terms of the football history. So uh, everything, and we have to make sure that we respect it. Uh, and we only respect it by putting in a good performance. And that's, that's what we have to do. 
Well, that certainly makes me feel old. <laughs> but that was before he was born. I can me rem too, Jim, remember me Norwich's too. success against Sunderland in this competition really clearly 40 seasons ago. Uh, listen, the sale of Gabriel Sarr has got obvious ramifications on Norwich's prospects. Johnny Rowe's got the Marseille on loan. Adam Eder's now at Celtic. They've had to prioritise youth within what's a, a pretty significant rebuild. So is this a season of consolidation, do you think, rather than another tilt of the playoffs? I think so. I think they'd love to try and think that perhaps top six is a possibility, but I think top half really is. I mean, it, it, but I, I, I think it's exciting times ahead for Norwich. I really do. You know, the, the American owners are going to be taken over, what, 85% come March. They've got, obviously, a, a new sporting director as well, a new manager in place, young, vibrant, who, who has a really exciting way of playing. I think it's almost a transitional season, this one, and then really go for it next. Well, before the game starts here at Selhurst Park, the uh, two sets of players have assembled around the edge of the centre circle. And there is going to be a moment's tribute here at Selhurst before we get underway. Just waiting for the uh, whistle from referee Matt Donoghue that will start that minute's applause. A tribute to Sven Joran Eriksson, who we lost yesterday. Well, there have already been some early goals in the Carabao Cup. Stoke leading at Middlesbrough by a golden L. Rotherham a goal up at Fleetwood. Queen's Park Rangers leading Luton. We've had a difficult start of the season, 1-0. Late Norian a goal up at Millwall. Preston a goal up at Harrogate. Use of all of the goals as they go in here on TalkSport 2. But the main event as far as we're concerned tonight, Crystal Palace against Norwich. Palace, one of six current Premier League teams who've never reached the League Cup final. But with a European winner now at the helm, will this be the season that some long overdue success arrives? No club from outside the elites won the League Cup more times than Norwich. And in the season, they celebrate the 40th anniversary of their last success. They aim for more progress and a top flight scalp in the progress. We're underway. Palace red and blue striped shirts and blue shorts. And they're kicking from right to left towards the Sainsbury's end of the ground. And Norwich attacking the uh, Homesdale Road end away to our right-hand side. Palace lining up Henderson in goal. Klein Gehi and Riyad. Munoz de Corre, Hughes and Mitchell. Kamada Reneza and Mateta. And Long's in goal for Norwich. Fisher, Hanley, Cordoba and Kriseni. Gibbs, Nunez and Forsen for Scythe, Cernyach and Henderson and uh, Hernandez, I beg your pardon, on the left flank for Norwich. As Watford take a 1-0 lead at home to Plymouth, Palace bring the ball forward here with the blonde-haired Will Hughes and towards Daniel Munoz. We'll get there down towards the corner flag on the Crystal Palace right. Checks, pulls it back for Hughes. Good ball inside the penalty area. And Kamada couldn't quite get it into his stride. But that's a really good first attacking move from Crystal Palace. All but the Japanese's control. Yeah, and twice Will Hughes, brilliant, incisive, first time passing. The vision, but also the execution. One to play Munoz in. And then when he got the ball back... He played in Kamada, and I have to say, that's really poor touch from the Japanese international. He was in as well, wasn't he? Uh, Fleet would have equalised at home to Rotherham. That's 1-1. Huddersfield leading at Walsall uh, through Josh Corrimer's goal. And Zach Nelson's equalised for Luton at QPR. And also Grimsby leading Sheffield Wednesday 1-0. Good ball inside. Kamada! It's not going to miss this one. And it has taken 97 seconds. Crystal Palace leading, Norwich had already had a warning, but Mateta just threaded the ball through, Kamada making the run, past the Norwich back line that stood statuesque, and he just drew the goalkeeper, George Long nudged it past him, and he's got his first Palace goal. 
Well, that touch was much better, wasn't it? My goodness, a bit of a taster for him. And I think he realised if he ever got into a position like that again, he'd have to make sure it was better. But it's a wonderful pass again from Pugh, then from Mateta. And just the timing of the run from Kamina meant that you know, George Long comes out. But he gets there first, Kamina, and his first touch is so good. Grant Hanley gets really close to it on the second touch, but it's still so close to him. He's able to get there first and pass the ball into an empty net. Really positive play from Palace. And we spoke about at the weekend, they were actually pretty good up until the final third, just not clinical enough. They've been very clinical within the first, what, 97 seconds? Yeah, I mean, you could argue that I think that um, Palace on different days might have won the first two league games Absolutely. of the season. I saw the first one at Brentford where six, seven times out of ten, they might have won that. And I know that you feel that... that on different days they might have been able to get the three points against the Hammers here at the weekend L listen I watched you know them against West Ham and in the first half I thought they were much more dangerous and Edouard and Eze really should have made it one possibly two nil as well Eze unlucky with a crossbar but he had a one on one opportunity that they had their chances about being clinical certainly clinical there it's Shady Riyad back towards Gay, he just let the ball run underneath his foot which wasn't his intention but it's clear before he gets to uh, Cernyac Henderson getting it away now Mateta oh, there's so much space on the Palace right Munoz bringing it forward Klein's making a run outside him there are three to try and hit in the middle he's pulled it back instead towards Munoz here's Kamada the goal scorer back out of the Palace right for Nathaniel Klein who's making his first appearance of the season player who has played in the final of this competition back in his Liverpool days. Now towards Riyad, Norwich hemmed in inside their penalty area right now. Will Hughes is going to be able to take over. And he plays it down the right-hand side for Klein, who's playing at centre-half on the right of the three, but taking up attacking positions. Hughes with a lovely switch of play out towards Tyreek Mitchell. Down the line of the penalty area for Ebra Eza. Eza pirouetting away from the dead ball line, just gliding effortlessly in possession plays it back to Decore he's making his first start since last November when he picked up that really bad Achilles tendon injury just lends it back to Riyad gets it back again Decore able to turn skipping away from the challenge of Nunez in midfield Hughes helps it wide to the right hand side Palace really in the mood here Mateta inside the penalty area they try to lay it off but Criseni is going to be able to clear only as far as Hughes bring it forward again the blonde haired Palace midfielder in towards Mateta on the edge of the box he's gone down no penalty and then the referee Matt Donny who plays a good advantage Norwich's way as they look to break quickly but Palace are there and able to mop up with Klein getting it back for Henderson it's a breathless opening five minutes with Palace leading 1-0 it really is and it's been all Palace as well and from Norwich's point of view they've just got to make sure they don't concede that second goal Palace have come out the blocks really, really fast. They look like they want to put this game to bed in the first half. Norwich City cannot let them. Listen, they're very much on top. They're not expected to win this game, Norwich, but if they can stay just one in it, then they're still in this match. Uh, Kamada offside as the ball is played down to him on the right-hand touchline. And a chance just for Norwich really to draw some collective breath because they've hardly been able to get out of their own half and every time Palace push forward it looks as though the Canaries are going to be punished absolutely and what they need to do is get three four five six passes just to take the sting out the game because Palace have started fast but they're pressing well Palace and then the ball's going long and they're winning the ball back so here's Cernac, who played on the right wing on his Norwich debut at the weekend but he's playing up top tonight and Cernac, who made his debut on Saturday having signed from a club in Poland the Croatian under 21 winger that they're delighted to have now the ball played down the left hand side of the penalty area. it's in for Cernac good save but on the follow up it's somehow scuffed wide by Forsyth and Norwich could and should be back on level terms first attack of the game Cernac forcing a decent save Forsyth would love to have that one back oh well what a brilliant bit of play from Norwich you have to say down that left hand side it's Hernandez who showed the pace. The ball was played in behind. Mark Gerhi's tried to come across then realised he can't get there. The ball's been cut back. The Cernatch is really unlucky because that's a fantastic save from Dean Henderson. And how does he miss that full side from there? Yes, he's under pressure. 
but he's just literally what three yards out right in front of goal and it skews off his foot hits the post and goes wide yeah just brush the outside of the post on its way past it should have been the first senior goal of his career he only made his full debut against Blackburn 10 days ago a winger who signed from Hamilton and that was a massive moment to get Norwich back on level terms. Meanwhile, you're not missing anything because Shedi Riyad is down injured inside the six-yard box. He'd thrown himself in to try and make a block as all of that was going on and is uh, receiving quite extensive medical treatment here. Yeah, he looks in a bit of pain. Looks like it's to do with his knee. The physio is just trying to move it around, but he looks in real discomfort at the moment. I think we're going to be here for a few more minutes or he actually is going to come off. No way he can carry on like this. But that, that, that was such a wonderful opportunity after what happened with Palace and the way they started so well. So to Norwich, first attempt. And Forsyth, he's literally four yards, bang in front of goal. Yes, he's got a defender breathing down him. And yes, he's stretching a little bit. But he just has to get any kind of decent contact on it. And it goes in the goal because Henderson's already on the ground because he's made that save initially. And now elsewhere, Blackburn leading Blackpool by a goal and El Mata Gay uh, from the penalty spot there. Palace leading Norwich here, courtesy of that. Uh, the goal from uh, Daichi Kamada, the sign on a free from Lazio. is a player that Glasner knew all about because he made more than 100 Bundesliga appearances for Eintracht Frankfurt and most of those were under Glasner. He was uh, a part of that side that beat Rangers in the Europa League final a couple of seasons back. He's a very versatile forward. He's uh, played in pre-season as a, as a winger. He can play as a 10. He, he can sometimes play almost as a false nine as well. He's playing as a, an inside four behind Mateta tonight. I'll chuck in another position for him as well. He came off the bench uh, at the weekend because they were really pushing for it. At times, he was playing like a number six. So he can, he's a very versatile technical player, but his best position is as a 10. So Palace with the advantage, but with an injury as well and Riyad isn't going to be able to play any further part in this by the look of it the £14 million move uh, man from Barcelona is led away and Chris Richards is going to come on to replace him Richards the the one set of half of the three from the weekend that was left out tonight but he's uh, going to get 80 minutes anyway so Richards be interesting to see where he plays, whether he takes Riyad's position on the left of the three. The two Premier League games that he's started so far this season, he's played on the right of the three, although he did play some of the pre-season matches on the left, and, and he is there now. The position of minimum disruption, really, as far as Palace are concerned, he's just slotted straight in. So Richards for Riyad. Yeah, I think so. Look, Nathaniel Klein is experienced enough and versatile enough to play as a left-side centre-half, but I think Oliver Glasner just thinking... Look, we know you can do the job there. You can been a very good midfielder for Palace as well, but he can actually come through the ranks as a centre-half, so he knows that position extremely well. And he himself is intelligent and versatile enough to play on that left side. And now play will stop again after the resumption uh, because Forson is down injured for Norwich. One of their summer signings, the uh, £4 million pound arrival from Salzburg, the Ghanaian international, and he's been caught on the Norwich medical staff uh, on giving him treatment so we've seen the goal a bad miss a really bad touch which prevented another shooting opportunity but in 11 minutes we've probably only seen about six minutes of action because <laughs> of the injuries and if it carries on like this and there's only one goal in it and Norwich nick one and there's penalties we could be here till midnight at least <laughs> Yeah, a fair bit of stoppage time already guaranteed at the end of this first half. Raul Jimenez has given Fulham the lead away to Birmingham from the penalty spot. A 10th minute lead there for the Premier League side against League One opposition at St Andrews. Uh, Adrian Durham based at St Andrews tonight, incidentally, over on Talk Sport. Uh, taking you around the grounds in conjunction with every kick that counts from Goodison Park as Everton hosts Doncaster tonight. If you've got the Talk Sport app, you can easily swipe left and swipe right and you can keep abreast of all of the significant action in both of those games well this looks like a bad one for Forson whose right shoulder is being attended to and I just wonder whether it's going to be strapped up or whether he's uh, also not going to be able to continue either so potentially a serious injury for both Kenny McLean is uh, getting ready and he's 
going to be the Norwich man that's going to come on to replace yeah. and this is a horrible start from that point of view with a bad injury to players from both teams no absolutely it's a real shame for Forson because he just slips you know it's not as if it's a tackle no one's gone in late no one's got an elbow out he's just slipped and then fell as he's been trying to sprint and close the ball down and clearly landed very badly on his shoulder now, so Forson's coming off and Kenny McLean who played his Scottish Cup and League Cup finals in his Aberdeen days is going to come on to replace Amanqua Forson well, best wishes with him he's in a lot of distress as he leaves the field he's, he's being led away he's able to walk off but he's, uh, he's got his right hand up to his brow covering his eyes and clearly is in a great degree of discomfort so McLean for Forson is an injury enforced Norwich change now that's where Fleetwood uh, back ahead at home to Rotherham 2-1 up Ryan Graydon's got both of those Stoke leading at Middlesbrough at half time in a 7-15 kickoff 1-0 Blackburn 1 Blackpool 0 as I say 2-1 to Fleetwood at home to Rotherham Grimsby 1 Sheffield Wednesday nil through Cam McJanet Late Orient leading one of the London derbies tonight 1-0 at Millwall QPR 1 Luton 1 Huddersfield a goal up at Walsall Watford lead Plymouth 1-0 Fulham leading at Birmingham and here at Selhurst we're back underway it's Palace 1 Norwich 0 with 13 minutes on the clock well probably only about seven and a half, eight minutes worth of action in that 13 minutes so far 1-0 and you know what Jim it's, it's a real shame one obviously and most importantly for the players that have come off but two this, this game started so well Crystal Palace did themselves and then Norwich had that wonderful opportunity and you're thinking okay this looks a really open game and now it's almost like we started again from kickoff. Norwich determined under the new coach Johannes Hoff Thorup to play out from the back and often find themselves in danger when doing so because Palace are more than happy to press and that was a poor challenge on Ezra from the young fullback Kellen Fisher and it's a free kick to Palace which will be taken a couple of yards in from the left-hand touch lines 1-0 here on TalkSport 2 the, the close control of Ezra is just absolutely incredible I mean he put a nutmeg through on Saturday some, one of the players and I'm telling you now there wasn't enough surface area to put it through the ball was bigger than the gap between the guy's legs but again just great skill there and then he was brought down by Fisher who I think is going to have a, a very long night tonight now Fulham 2 up at Birmingham Jay Stansfield who was on loan at Blues last season scoring against them tonight here's Ezra swinging this free kick in right footed inside the penalty area Grant Hanley heads that away and it bounces down on the edge of the penalty area Fisher chasing after that Decore winning it back for Palace Then Klein will play it forward and it goes via Richards back to Klein again and now to the halfway line and Kamada the goal scorer goes back for Will Hughes and Norwich still struggling to get out down towards Ezra and it's just danced away from Forsyth now he's running at Fisher towards the edge of the penalty area but his ball in was easily cleared out only as far as Mark Gahey and well, obvious speculation I would imagine in the uh, the the Palace ranks tonight amongst the supporters whether this is the last chance they'll get to see Gahey in a Palace shirt probably at this stage wouldn't really surprise you either way here's Klein who played forward and now via Decore it goes back for Gahey once more and Chris Rich is the United States international play it forward to Tyreek Mitchell the England international here's Hughes now he's back inside the centre circle Gahey working in Mateta lovely touch and then he'll spin and make the return run Kamala couldn't give him the ball back and it goes through for George Long it's a great touch a touch of a man in real confident mood and also a man who knows that maybe his place might be under threat and <laughs> we'll have to wait and see what happens there from when Eddie Nketiah does sign but a wonderful touch from Mateta and it was actually a really poor pass first time from Kamala who's better than that and he would have been in Mateta uh, Sussex Derby, Brighton leading Crawley, 1-0. Palace fans will be delighted to hear that. Simon Dingra is uh, the man that has uh, given the RB in the lead there. Here's Grant Hanley, sliding a long ball forward that is really well brought down by Fisher. They just watched it over his shoulder, killed it on the top of his right boot, but Richards gave him no time or space to do anything after that, and Palace have swiftly won it back. Hanley then beats Ezra in the air. Hughes steers the ball forward. And Ezra has done really well just to let the ball run between his legs to come off Hanley and go out of play for a throw. <laughs> Mitchell tries to take, sack the juggler, uh, because he hadn't even got the ball 
into a position above his head before he dropped it onto the field of play. But sensible referee is allowed to take it again. No good place from just, Norwich. Yeah, it was just as well it slipped out of his hands early because it could have been seen as a foul throw, but it'd been another a second or two later. That's Scott Minto. Alongside me here at Selhurst Park tonight. 1 0 to Palace. A really good value for the lead, albeit that young Gabe Forsyth missed a great chance to get Norwich back on level terms. Ezra making a good run over the top. Pass Hanley, lobs it over the goalkeeper. An impudent finish to double Palace's lead. When they are in the mood, they are irrepressible. And tonight, they're in the mood. Great run forward from Ezra. But the flag was up. It must have been close. No VAR for these League Cup ties. It must have been a really late flag. But he stays 1-0. Wow, I'd love to see a replay on that one. i tell you what. He... I, 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 I have to see a replay. I don't get it, Jim. A fair play to the referee's assistant. He must be right. But it looked like he timed his run perfectly. And it was a wonderful touch, wasn't it, for Meze? He realised that... George Long was going to try and come out. I, I still don't think that's offside. It looks like to me that the right back Fisher's keeping him on. But we haven't seen it, even on the replays, a definitive angle from when the ball was actually kicked. But no VAR, so I know Adrian Durham would be happy about that, are you? Uh, what, that there's no VAR? Yes. It's let's, let's not it's, go there. It's different with our VAR, isn't it? Let's just say that. I'm still watching a lot of non-league football where there's no VAR and uh, enjoying that being the case I must admit but listen I, I'm I'm not as anti it as a, a lot of people are here's Decore uh, Decore will move into a more central position try and get away from Munoz to Will Hughes the one thing I will say is that the assistant referees get so many of those right as Klein plays this in towards Mateta and Norris should be able to clear on the edge of their own penalty area for Scythe. Back for Fisher. There's a put him under pressure. Norwich survived that pressure. System referees get such a high proportion of those right. They that do. one was close. If he, he may have got it wrong. He, well, and, and I don't know that he has. He might have got it wrong. But they get so many right that I think you, for, you could forgive them if that one was just marginally out because I've seen it twice and I'm not sure so no we haven't had the, uh, the best of angles even on the replays but I I'm totally with you I think nine times out of ten the assistant referees get it spot on uh, Decore getting it forward Norwich on the edge of their own penalty error trying to play their way out there's a good turn in the engine room there by Liam Gibbs Gibbs working it forward there's Hernandez another opportunity for him to try and run at Klein that was the avenue that brought Norwich their best chance uh, but Klein with a good sliding challenge gets it out of play and Norwich will build from the back they were beaten in Fulham last season in round three they've actually only been knocked out in two of their last 11 second round ties in this competition Norwich City which is a pretty tidy return a couple of those in uh, relatively recent times to, to Luton and Bournemouth and they saw off Stevenage by the odd goal in seven in a match in which Stevenage twice equalised to, to get this far this season but they've got work to do here trailing 1-0 Mitchell leading the press this time uh, for Scythe withstands it goes back to his goalkeeper Long the play out via Cordoba uh, the Panamanians ball just about good enough but Norwich then lose possession and get it back quickly with Fisher played at left back in the first round tie but playing at right back tonight Ball work forward. Sienac trying to hold it up. Easily won back by Gahey. Trying to release Ezra. Good starting challenge in on him from Fisher. And the ball is out of play for a throw that will be taken on the Palace left-hand side. With 21 minutes in. Palace leading Norwich here on TalkSport 2. Still courtesy of that second-minute goal from Kamada. Here's Scott Minto. Yeah, and what I would say is a very youthful right-hand side of, of Norwich with Fisher and Forsyth as well. I think they'll, they'll learn a lot, both defensively and attacking-wise, by watching Evereze. And obviously, at close quarters, who've just gone past two players already. Oh, and he's got it back again from Mateta. And now he works it across the edge of the penalty area. Good touch to set up Hughes from Kamada. Now to the right-hand side of the box, Munoz. Back for Hughes. Urge to shoot. Tries a little left-footed dink. And just passed it back effectively to Norwich keeper George Long. Yeah, he's got a wand of a left foot. It was a, just a stick there, wasn't it? And I'll tell you what, again, I talk about Eze, and he picked up the ball and went past two players and started another attack. As I say, from, 
from Fisher's point of view, it's going to be, OK, I'm coming up against a, one of the Premier League's best individual players here. How can I try and keep him as quiet as possible? And what can I learn from it? And in terms of Gabe Forsyth, you know, he should be looking at him and saying, well, what does he do that, that perhaps I can learn from as well? That sort of way he cuts inside and inverts, or he's quite happy to go outside at times. Decision making, the skill. And I think both these players will learn a lot from this evening. Uh, Preston at two up at Harrogate. A uh, penalty from Sam Greenwood. And his Cordoba is making his debut for Norwich tonight. His full debut. A £3 million signing from Levski Sofia in Bulgaria. A uh, Panamanian international who played 35 minutes against Blackburn. That's his only appearance for the Canaries so far. Playing on the left of the two centre halves. And under pressure here from Camada. He's worked it back to his goalkeeper, George Long, who. Uh, gets the night in goal with Angus Gunn given a night off. Kenny McLean on the edge of his own penalty area getting it forward. And now Gibbs urged to play it quickly. Four down the left-hand side for Criseni, who stops and turns. And lays it back into the heart of that midfield again. Nunez has got it now. Nunez inside his own half of the centre circle. To the Scottish international McLean. Back from him to Cordoba. McLean under pressure from Hughes, he's able to withstand that, finds Chris Enney, who was in Exeter's first team as a 15-year-old, he was in Villa's first team as a 16-year-old, and now made a one and a half million pound move to Norwich over the summer. Norwich losing possession, it's uh, very quickly back with the Palace goalkeeper Henderson, and they'll be able to build from the back again. One nil to Palace. Yeah, I mean, from Chris Enney's point of view, I think when you've been a, an absolute star as a kid then it's not quite happened it's a, it's a very brave move to say right I'm going to sort of drop down a division I'm, I'm going to realise I'm not quite a Premier League player right now but I, I believe I can be again in the future but also just on the pressing there as well Palace pressed really well to, to win the ball back as Hughes guides it forward here Ezra and then Mateta helping it out towards Mitchell but too much on it and it goes out for a goal kick. But just 30 seconds earlier, they tried to press, a high press, and it was Czech Dekori who just allowed Kenny McLean to let the ball run across him, and then suddenly the whole pitch opens up. It just takes one player to be half a yard off it, and the whole press is gone, so it's very important everyone's on it. Uh, the news tonight, if you're uh, just joining us here on TalkSport 2, Eddie and Ketty are set to become a, a Crystal Palace player, and a £30 million pound move from Arsenal. One of those Palace players that's left over the last 10 days or so is on the score sheet tonight Jordan Ayew opening his account for Leicester who lead Tranmere by a goal to nil and Preston are now three up away at Harrogate Osmiic has scored the uh, second in quick succession there two in three minutes in that game uh, in North Yorkshire tonight here in South London 1-0 to Palace but a serious injury for players from both teams in separate incidents inside the opening 10 minutes Ashedi Riyad and Amankwa Forsen, the two players that have gone off with uh, a leg and shoulder injury respectively. Decore, back for Chris Richards here for the Eagles, down towards Mitchell. Mitchell to Ezra. Mitchell trying to make his way through past Nunez, couldn't quite get past him. Fisher puts it out of play for a throw. But still Palace way inside Norwich half for nearly all of the time. Canary's restricted to counter-attacks and haven't been too many of those. Klein now put under pressure. That was the ball back to him. It was the cue for them to press. And Hernandez was very quickly uh, asking questions of him. Palace able to get it forward. Klein can bring it towards the edge of the penalty area. Munoz laying it off here for Decore. Almost got it back through to him. McLean's there to dig it away with Nunez on the edge of the penalty area. And now they get it out towards Hernandez. And he has the opportunity to get into Palace territory and run with possession. The red and blue shirts very quickly back behind the ball, forcing him to check. And he had to lay it back way inside his own half in a bit to maintain possession here. Well, Will Hughes did really well there because Hernandez showed a great bit of pace and he could easily have then gone one-on-one -on -one if Hughes had just given up. But because he sprinted as much as possible as well, I think Hernandez realised that I'm not just got to get past one player, I've got to get past two. So he's turned around and put it back the other way. And that's exactly the type of attitude you want and, and certainly a manager wants you know, it's a Carabao Cup, you won the lap, you should go on and win the game. But no, it's not just with the ball, without the ball, they're working very hard here, Palace. Well, Huddersfield are leading at Walsall, but they're down to 10 men uh, because Matty Pearson has been sent off and Stoke are two up 
at Middlesbrough, who won 3 0 at Leeds in round one, live on Talk Sport. But now in round two, they find themselves 2 0 down at home to Championship Stoke. Klein's got the ball out the back for Palace. Hoping to avoid a third straight defeat at the start of this season in all competitions. They haven't lost three games in a row since March 2023. Uh, the early signs are they won't be losing this one, but there's a long way to go. They lead 1-0, they're really good value for it. But Hernandez has got the ball on the Norwich left. Now plays it back for Cordoba. Now ahead of him in the midfield, Kenny McClay. Sirnach having to feed off scraps really leading the line for Norwich tonight and he dropped deep there trying to draw Richards with him hoping that there'd be a third man running past him Norwich are able to turn now in the midfield and Gibbs will feed it out towards the left back from Hernandez now towards McLean Crescenti's out on the left Forsyth will just work it round the corner but he got the angle wrong and it goes straight through for Dean Henderson in the Palace goal. 1-0 Crystal Palace leading Norwich here on TalkSport 2. We played 28 minutes and these are the thoughts of Scott Minter. Yeah, Cernach obviously wanting to make a, you know, a big impact. He's, he's hardly touched the ball. He's not given any quality ball at all. When it has come up, he's had Mark Gurhey on his shoulder. So he's just dropped off there, as you say, ex wanting, expecting someone to kind of bomb on him behind. It was only Kellen Fisher, the right back, who was willing to do that. At the moment, Palace very much on top. Now Norwich working back out towards Hernandez on that left flank. And that was a good ball, well taken down. He's got Klein with him, but at a respectful distance. Little one-two between Hernandez and McLean. Now played back to the uh, midfield. Swung forward towards Fisher. For Scythe waiting for seconds on the edge of the penalty area, and it's clear past him. Brought back down by Hanley. Hanley, Cordoba. Nunez just getting it away from Mateta to keep the move going. Now Criseni turning neatly away from Camada to feed it back out towards Hernandez on that left flank again for Norwich City in there. Familiar yellow shirts and green shorts kicking from left to right in this first half, attacking the, the Homesdale. Hanley, four from him to McLean, first time layoff from him. Camada doing the closing down this time, trying to embarrass the Marcelino Nunez, but the uh, Chilean international just got it past him. Hanley, now Ezra putting the press on uh, George Long, the goalkeeper. Norwich still able to survive and neatly play around it. And coming out from the back, have it again with McClay. This is probably the most sustained spell of possession that Norwich have had, albeit that they're only going sideways with was, it at the moment. I was just about to say, you're absolutely spot on, and they're passing the ball back to the keeper. So yes, they are able to, to get some passes. But you know what? If, that, if that's the next best thing they can do, then so be it. At least they've got the ball. What they don't want to do is, is lose it on the press. But at some point, you get the feeling they're going to knock it long. Gurhi's going to beat Cernic in the air. And then Palace are going to get the ball back. It's down to the midfield to somehow find spaces and get the ball in between the Palace midfield and defenders as well. But what have we just seen? Uh, long cleared it long. And it was... Uh, Easily mopped up by Will Hughes, who finds Klein, and now to Richards. As Stoke go three up at Middlesbrough, Lewis Kumas on loan from Liverpool. And scoring the third there. And great first half, or first hour of that 7.15 kickoff for Stoke on side tonight. Middlesbrough nil, Stoke three. Here's Klein. Playing it back through the midfield again. Two to Cora. Corey turning away, finding Hughes. We've got more live Carabao Cup action for you tomorrow. A choice of listening again for you over on Talk Sport. Bournemouth travel to West Ham, who've had a, an up and down start of the season with a win and a defeat. That's a 7.45 kickoff tomorrow. As Mateta lays it off for Mitchell here. Pull back for Ezra. Side netting only. But a sharp chance for Iberici Ezra near the corner of the six yard box. Had to hit it first time, really and probably beat long at his near post, but it's just a foot or so wide. Yeah, the angle is just too tight. You're right, he's got two players just honing down on him. I mean, with the skill that he's got, he still could have taken a touch and done a, a little bit of magic and created more space for himself, but he decided to take it first time. But because he was so far past the near post, there'll be some strike from there to, to kind of whip it in past the goalkeeper. Uh, as I mentioned, it's West Ham Bournemouth tomorrow night. Now, our coverage will be presented by Adrian Durham from Molyneux, where Wolves take on Burnley. And Forest against Newcastle is our live game here 
on TalkSport 2 tomorrow evening. That's an 8 o'clock kickoff. So West Ham Bournemouth 7.45 at TalkSport. Forest Newcastle TalkSport 2 at 8. So that's tomorrow night's choice of listening for you. Uh, you're not missing anything here because Mitchell went down for a moment for Palace. Uh, just got a slight problem uh, with his uh, right foot. He's uh, just got his boot off. Uh, and uh, he's just undergoing some running repairs. I think they're changing his boot for him. He's going to be all right. He's going to be able to continue. Harrogate nil, Preston four. Great first half there for North End. Osmijic scoring again. Uh, life's looking good. Early stages under Paul Heckingbottom there. Harrogate nil, Preston four. Going up for half time. And it's half time. Uh, at QPR, QPR 1, Luton 1. Those two meet each other again, incidentally, Friday night. And that's here on TalkSport 2 from the EFL. An 8 o'clock kickoff, Luton QPR, Friday night at 8. And here's Richards, which is getting the ball forward for Decore to Eza. Great touch around the corner, just committed Fisher. Tries to release Mateta. Hanley goes across there to mop up for Norwich. Goes back to his goalkeeper. Long will play out to Marcelino Nunez on the edge of his own box. Just plays the way that he's facing. Back towards Cordova. And Norwich bringing it forward. Win a free kick for a foul on McLean. And Mitchell's now back on for Palace, having sorted that left boot out. And he's in a position to continue. So here's Kenny McLean for Norwich. And all the time that it's only one... The Canaries will feel that they're only one decent counter-attack away from somehow getting back into the game, as they should have done really early with that great chance that gave for Scythe Mix. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, in, in my head, I can't get, get it out of my head the way how dominant Spurs were in that first game against Leicester. And, you know, could easily have been three or four. It wasn't. You're thinking, well, it's going to be three or four, and yet somehow they just sat off a little bit. Leicester nicked a goal. And it ended up being a draw, which obviously tonight means penalties. So, all the while it's 1-0, they're definitely in this game, Norwich. Hughes goes wide for Munoz. Coming off the right flank for Crystal Palace. Back for Will Hughes again. Decore playing it quickly. Deflected off a, a Norwich foot in the midfield. That of uh, Liam Gibbs. Palace get it back. Hughes to Richards to Mitchell. And back again for Chris Richards. Decore. Getting the instruction to turn, but he just played it to Gahey anyway. Gahey for Hughes. Hughes rolling his studs over the, the top of the ball, goes square to his right-hand side for Klein. Klein out towards the right-hand side for Munoz. Kamada can take it on the edge of the penalty area, laying it back for Hughes. Hughes working it in, looking for Mitchell in space, but it's cut out by Kellen Fisher. Uh, Fisher then will come out of the penalty area, work it forward towards Forsyth, who... Protected the ball well with his first touch and just invited the challenge from Richards, which was a foul. Yeah, both of them did well. First of all, Fisher with two Palace players around him, not just hoofing it long, realising that actually, yeah, I can pass it out. And then when Forsyth got the touch, goes down and just takes a bit of the pressure off Norwich. Yeah, big night for Fisher. Now, Scott's been saying, he was uh, playing non-league football until relatively recently. A part of that successful non-league Bromley side. Go on, Bromley. He was in the one that got to the playoffs rather than the one that won the playoffs. And uh, it was his form as a teenager there that saw Norwich uh, take a chance on him. And he looks solid enough. My local club. And a good start they've had as well. Very good. Hughes. Now McLean winning it back. Now McLean goes out to his left-hand side for Ben Criseni. Four from him to Hernandez. Hernandez level with the edge of the Crystal Palace penalty area. Kamada has got a, a great defensive work ethic, but he's been beaten there. It's playing inside the area for Gibbs. Gibbs lucky to get a second opportunity. Still he goes, working it inside the six-yard box. Gay Heat and then Hughes able to get it away. But if Gibbs had gone first time there, it could potentially have been a different story. His first touch was a poor one. Stoke four up at Middlesbrough with Millian Manhoof, the Dutchman, one of the summer signings scoring. That's 65 minutes in there. Middlesbrough nil, Stoke four. Played 36 minutes here. This one going with the form, but Palace leading Norwich by a golden L. Tell you what though, Jim, Norwich will take this, especially after five minutes. And even before the game, if they can get to 1 0 at half time, very, very much in it. I was expecting after that start, Forest uh, Palace to come at them 
you know, a heck of a lot and maybe make it two or three. It looked like they wanted to finish the game at half time, but as it stands, Canary's very much in it. Cordoba. Play through the centre circle for Nunez. Nunez to McClay. I think Norwich would be quite keen to take another central midfielder in the, the days that remain in this transfer window. McLean and, and Nunez, sort of permanent fixtures in the heart of the midfield, not an awful lot of competition for places where they play. Uh, here's Gibbs, who would like to have something to say about that. Uh, played forward now into the, the feet of Sirnach. Back for McLean again. Norwich working back towards Nunez, who's playing as the deepest of their uh, midfielders. Now towards McLean. Challenge on him from Hughes. Referee's played a good advantage. Gibbs able to turn. Working towards the edge of the Palace penalty area. Working his square. Right-footed effort blazed over the bar by Marcelino Nunez. Well, he's only a rare goal scorer. And he leant back 20 yards out and fired it halfway back the home zone. Well, you can see why. But that was superb play from Norwich. And if anyone wants to know why teams want to pass, pass, pass and sometimes be quite happy to go back, that's exactly why. Because they were waiting for Palace to press. And then just, again, talk about players just being half a yard off. One touch passing from Norwich. Then they suddenly found a bit of space with Gibbs, who played it to Nunez and... Oh, what a wonderful opportunity. Right on the edge of the box, straight in front of goal. You have to hit the target at least. At least. Richard sends a long ball forward. Hanley heads it down. Straight at Ezra. Ezra turning away. And then losing possession as he ran into trouble. Nunez winning it back. And Long will get it out from the back to uh, Cordoba. Well, it's been a, a little bit of a slow burner, this Norwich performance, but they're warming to their task. Six minutes to go to half time, still just the goal now. Cabot is scoring 97 seconds in tonight. A very close offside call uh, denied Palace a second when it looked as though Ezra had lobbed them into a 2 0 lead. And Norwich themselves missing a good chance inside the opening 10 injury strewn minutes when Forsyth hit the post from three and a half yards out. McLean going back for Cordova. Long left-footed ball four from him. And Andes. Oh, it's a lovely reverse ball through the midfield. Cernach to his left-hand side. Now they come forward. It's a poor ball in from Gibbs. And it's easily cleared. Cernach waiting. The ball from Hernandez round the corner was brilliant. If Gibbs had been able to supply anything half as good, Cernach might have been in. But he wasn't. And Palace survived. Well, the word I was going to use was confidence. Norwich have absolutely grown in confidence throughout this half. And they're playing the ball at the back within, in their own box. They're trying to suck Palace on, who are trying to high press, realising one mistake and they're through on goal. But know that the slick Norwich passing is there now. Again, they feel confident enough to do it. One, two touch passing. And suddenly, before you know it, they're past the, the, the Palace forwards, they're past the Palace midfielders, and they're right at the back three of Palace and in the end it was just a really poor pass from Gibbs where he kind of panicked a little bit he needed to take another touch and then make sure he could place Cernatch in but to be fair he, he looks decent doesn't he yeah he's lively you can, you can understand why they were keen to get him and they paid about a million pounds for him uh, from a club in Poland where he wasn't prolific he's a one in five man through his career but he has that versatility. Norwich fans have already seen it. He played on the right wing with Josh Sargent through the middle at, at the weekend. It may well be that the right wing becomes a position in which he's used more often than not at the moment for the Canaries. But through the middle tonight, here's Mitchell pulling down a, a long ball out of the sky. And he uses the full width of the pitch. He's uh, he just flicked it up into Fisher's chin. And he goes out of play for a throw to Paris. What about this score from the Riverside? Middlesbrough nil, Stoke five. A million man have scored again, two in five minutes for the Dutchman there. Stoke five up at Middlesbrough. Wow. It's an extraordinary score. Like in the context of Middlesbrough's 3-0 yeah. win at Leeds a fortnight ago. That's well, a, there must have been lots of changes, but it's not the under-15s playing, is it? Well, it's just... I can't get my head around that, I must admit. Barcelona behind at Raya Vallecano tonight as well in the, the very early stages there Runai Lopez see in the first 10 minutes Ezra down the line Mitchell getting to the byline left footed ball in from him pulled back towards the penalty spot Hanley can get it clear 
and Norwich will bring it forward again with Forsyth the former Hamilton man doing well to find Kenny McLean who's ball forward there and that's chasing trying to go down the side of Richards he couldn't Ezra the other end goes down the side of the defender and finds Mateta Mateta finds that the flag's up against him and it's a free kick that Norwich will take about 10 yards from their dead ball line three to go to half time probably five minutes to be added on it's 1-0 to Palace yeah I did wonder whether the flag would go up because Mateta just didn't quite time the run but Gurhi really good play from him first of all he intercepted the pass and then he looked forward and he passed through the line straight to Evreze who turned and then tried to play in Mateta who was just offside but better more incisive football from Palace that actually we haven't seen in the last 10 or so minutes yeah almost in their comfort zone they've uh, been not soaking up Norwich pressure uh, but they've had a little bit more to think about defensively they need to be careful though Jim because they're very much on the back foot at the moment and Norwich have created a couple of chances Hernandez goes back for Gibbs and Norwich still with uh, the likes of Sargent and uh, Boyer Sainz to bring off the bench if necessary Cordoba has got possession oh just stretched it looked as though he might have shown a little bit too much of that to Camada uh, but he was able to recover and work it all the way back to his goalkeeper George Long the former Sheffield United Hull and Millwall keeper he's got the ball at his feet now by the penalty spot beaten once very early on but that camera goal remains the difference between the two sides here on Talk Sport 2 in 90 seconds of the regulation 45 minutes to go ball headed on the touchline by the young fullback Fisher down to the even younger Forsyth turned through the midfield by McLean and picked up by Klein Klein getting it forward giving it away Gibbs just plays the way that he's facing goes back for McLean McLean to his left for Criseni back he goes towards Hanley it is a very young Norwich squad I mean in general this season not just tonight but tonight 14 of the 20 in the matchday squad are 24 or younger so that just gives you an idea really of how much they are building for the future at the moment Long who's one of the exceptions with a poor clearance that Norwich are able to pick up a loose ball around the edge of their own penalty area before that clearance became a problem for them Palace then uh, battling in the midfield there's uh, been a foul on Forsyth and it's on Sienach I beg your pardon and it's a free kick which will be taken by Norwich just on the right hand touchline 30 seconds to go to the break yeah I think with Norwich it's, it's very much a, a new manager we, we know that Ben Napper's been sort of looking for him perhaps before the end of last season um, because the results went well and they went into the playoffs it, it gave him a little bit of time and breathing space to look for the guy that he wants very much you know one of these young progressive you know, data based almost Maresca type of style as well and this short passing one twos and trying to outnumber people in, in, in different positions of the pitch and you can see they've done it quite a few times already in this first half after being blitzed almost in the first five ten minutes very much coming into the game uh, so we're into stoppage time six extra minutes at the end of this first half Richards in strongly Richards who came on inside the opening ten minutes after Shady Riyad picked up an injury Cordoba gets it forward helped round the corner by Cernach cleared by Klein but the last ten minutes have seen Norwich dominate possession they probably had about 65% of the ball in the the last 10 minutes albeit yeah. that I would think over the, the 45 as a whole it's still Palace that have had the majority of possession sliding challenge comes in from Richards he won it cleanly got himself away from Forsyth Palace will look to get it forward uh, coming together between Ezra and Fisher Camada and towards the right hand side of the area Munoz clipping it in towards the edge of the box but it was only Nunez that was there and he can on the swivel hit one right footed over halfway and allow Norwich to regain their defensive shape before they come back again. Possession actually 53-47 in Norwich's favour now over the whole game, which is interesting. Very interesting considering how the game started and I think it goes to show exactly how Norwich have come into this first half. Here's Will Hughes. Palace starting really brightly, but they have faded. Camada's offside here. Do you know what as well, Jim? I mean, obviously there's substitutions to be made. But the way this 11 v 11 are playing each other now after the really good start from Palace it's now Norwich dominating the, the, the possession and the tempo of it as well just sucking in Palace waiting for the press getting in behind them 
And Palace can't afford to keep on doing that because they will tire. Palace get it again. With Ezra. There's just 20 yards outside the penalty area in a central position. Hughes to Camada. Camada to Munoz and back again. And now to Ezra. Ezra in his white boots. Seven or eight yards outside the penalty area. Just threatened to play the ball forward and then worked it back instead away from Kenny McClay. Likeable Scottish international who's uh, been in Norwich for some time now on 230 games for the club behind him here's Cameron the right hand side of the penalty yeah, pulling it back Mateta on the turn Hughes threw a left foot in it but he didn't get that far and then McLean can help smuggle it clear for Norwich again Cernat's trying to hold it up does so gets it away from Gahey Klein is in very strong he might have used his arm it was uh, Munoz I beg your pardon over on that right hand side and a free kick is given Norwich as well yeah good movement actually in the first time that Eze won has tried to get on the ball for the first ten, uh, last 10 minutes and then they got into the box they'd be unlucky I don't even, well I do know that Norwich would not deserve to be going in at half time 2-0 down so it did well again we talked about I didn't realise they'd be this good on the ball but make sure you don't concede that second goal half time 1-0 you're still in it uh, Mateta Ezra Mateta Mitchell 4 to aim at Mateta just couldn't quite get there and then a Norwich player is sending it back inside his own penalty area which was ill-advised Camada goes down referee says no case to answer and McLean can help it away Gibbs now turning in the midfield ran straight to Gahey Marcelino Nunez winning it back Cordoba brings it forward long ranging stride of the Panamanian centre half but it's got him into trouble because Hughes has won it back now to Corre clipped over the top Ezra brings it down he's offside and for the second time tonight he has the ball in the net only to see the flag up against him well that looked a lot more clear cut still a great touch from Eze wasn't it and stick the ball in the back of the net then look across to the referee's assistant to see if he keeps the flag up or, or puts the flag up or not but just in the last few minutes the Palace have come back into it I think they realise they're in for a game here love the way Norwich are playing really interesting to see how they're all so comfortable from the back to midfield to up front are they potent enough clinical enough to create more chances and stick the ball in the back of the net already had the best chance almost straight after 1-0 they need to somehow get a goal Nunez to McLean to Gibbs Nunez going back inside his own half for Cordoba here's Hanley to Cordoba again and he can turn it forward via Criseni out to Gibbs Gibbs helping it to Hernandez always a sense of danger in that Palace back line when Hernandez has possession it's been given away this time though as he went infield towards Nunez Nunez just stumbled and lost it Canada can mop up Palace from still inside their own half but they will now be able to build for again themselves Richards to Mark Gahey Gahey coming over the halfway line to get it out towards Daniel Munoz the Colombian international who signed from Belgian football last summer and made a, a real impression the last three or four months of the season here at Selhurst I saw him score the winner at the London Stadium as well for Colombia against Spain yeah he's a good player very good uh, with uh, an unenviable disciplinary record mind he did get himself sent off against Uruguay in the semi-final of the Copa America over the summer and he picked up a stack of yellow cards uh, in Belgian football he's actually been able to keep a lid on things pretty much over here they're a tough lot the Colombians I should know I'm married to one well <laughs> how do you follow that <laughs> here on the edge of the penalty area George Long has got it played out to Hanley Hanley controlling the ball on the edge of his own penalty area trying to run the clock down and he's managed successfully in that regard well, it was a game that got off to an electrifying start. Daichi Kamada putting Palace ahead after two minutes, and that wasn't even his first chance of the game. It was a brilliantly taken goal. Norwich could have equalised shortly after through Gabe Forsyth from close range with an effort that came back off the outside of the post. Before the 10-minute mark had been reached, both Riyad and Forsen had gone off there for their respective sides through injury. Ezra then had a second disallowed. It was a, a brilliant lob, but the flag went up against him eventually and so we get the half time with Palace leading 1-0 
but the momentum that they had in the first 20 minutes has really dissipated Scott Minter. Absolutely, the scoreline doesn't actually tell the story, does it, Jim? You know, after that initial burst and start, and you're absolutely right to say that Canada had a chance before he scored his goal, and that was on 97 seconds. And yet, the way that Norwich have come back, creating that one chance, but after those injuries where it was almost like kick-off again and we start again, I thought Norwich was superb. I, I really did. The way they passed the ball out from the back, you can see how well they've coached. Pre-season hasn't gone overly well, and obviously the first game of the season they lost to Oxford. But just the last couple of games, although they're still looking for their first win of the season, you can see exactly what the manager wants and it's starting to come to fruition as well and after them perhaps not quite knowing if they were good enough but what was a, a strong side picked from Oliver Glasner certainly they've come back into it in the, the latter part of the first half and I would say 1-0 was probably not a fair scoreline and now elsewhere I could bow equalised for Sheffield Wednesday away to Grimsby we'll bring you all of the latest scores very shortly uh, when we come back don't forget over on TalkSport right now Everton against Doncaster Rovers still nil-nil and news of all the goals and reports as those goals go in on TalkSport but coming next here on TalkSport 2 we'll reflect on the first half action here at Selhurst Park and we'll look ahead to tomorrow night's double bill of live commentary action. Don't go away. Hard-hitting football coverage. Drives it in off the post. The League Cup live on TalkSport 2. The PGA Tour Championship, Thursday night from 6 on TalkSport 2 as the world's golfing elite go head-to-head -head at East Lake Golf Club. Hear full swing by pitch by putt commentary of all the action direct from Atlanta, Georgia. The PGA Tour Championship, Thursday night from 6 on TalkSport 2. At Ground Trade, we ask painters and decorators, would you get a tattoo of a rival team if it meant you won the league? Hey, <laughs> maybe. No chance. Yeah if it was on my backside. At least there's one thing they do agree on. There's no better paint than Crown. Crown. Crown Trade is so easy to use. 97% of painters and decorators who use Crown Trade agree. There's no better paint. It's not just paint, it's personal. Survey of 187 professional decorators. McDonald's Zoo Mix and Match menu. Choose any three for just three pounds. Like a cheeseburger, small fries and an apple pie. Or a mayo chicken, four McNuggets and an apple pie. Or an apple pie, apple pie and an apple pie. To share, obviously. The Mix and Match menu. Any three for three pounds. Ends 27th of August from 11am. Selected items only. Delivery, uplift and fee supply. Subject to availability. Price and participation may vary. At Morrison's with your more card, get 24 Andrex rolls for £9. That's 38p per roll. And 80 wash surf laundry powder for just £7. That's 86p per wash. That's more squeaky clean for less. Morrison's to shop at Morrison's. Majority of stores and online. Subject to availability. Andrex without more card, 11.85. Surf without more card, £11. Ends 3rd of September. And here they come. What a Magnificent sight. Yes, it's live British horse racing on the radio and TalkSport 2 have got it covered. Thursday afternoon from 1, TalkSport 2 will bring you full coverage and live race commentary of all the action. Direct from Foz Labs. Saddle up for live British horse racing on the radio. Download the TalkSport app and swipe left. Or ask your smart speaker to play TalkSport 2 to follow all the action. Thursday afternoon from 1 on TalkSport 2. Goal getting radio. Attacking volley off the crossbar and in. The League Cup live on TalkSport 2. Funny how things can change so very quickly. And Gibbs White lobs it over the keeper and makes it 3 2. Isak far post turns it in brilliantly. Football is just so wonderful for that. The gift that keeps on giving. What a start! for Ipswich Town and Sammy Smodix on his full debut sends the away end into raptures I have to say on a night like tonight I've really missed football haven't you and Callum Robinson has equalised and Carter's first goal of the season 2-0 Southampton and Adam Armstrong surely seals the deal you know we love football like you do oh it's left footed Keller it's an absolutely brilliant goal for West Ham towards Semenya who runs inside the penalty area gets it onto his left foot drives it into the goal and Cunha has his second of the afternoon Brown Hill in in behind the goalkeeper he scores 1-0 Burnley football never stops on the Talk Sport Network don't forget, we'll bring you two more Carabao Cup second round ties on the TalkSport Network tomorrow. West Ham against Bournemouth on TalkSport. And here on TalkSport 2, we'll bring you Newcastle's trip to Nottingham Forest. 
Now midfielder Sandro Tonali will make his return to competitive football following his 10-month ban for betting offences. Uh, that ban is now over. Tonali eligible to play and his manager Eddie Howe says he's ready and raring to go. He's fit. He just hasn't had the match. The bigger space is the 11 v 11 uh, that every footballer will tell you is the, the most important thing, really, the game the game time but he's done everything else um, he's completed all of training for a long period of time he's worked incredibly hard with the sports science team I'd imagine there's a range of emotions I mean uh, probably a lot of excitement a lot of you feel like you're probably at the next stage of his career really I think when you have a, a long period of time like he's had out you have a lot of time to think and analyse and to reflect I'm sure he's done all of those things and now it's just he's doing what he loves which is playing football and uh, that would be an incredible release for him uh, so Tonali back tomorrow and you can hear Newcastle's trip to Forest live on TalkSport 2 from 8 o'clock. Now time now to reflect on the day's other big stories and TalkSport understands that Brentford haven't received any formal transfer offer from Chelsea for Ivan Tony. He has verbally agreed a deal with Saudi Arabian side Al-Akhli but the Blues have now expressed their interest. And TalkSport's chief correspondent Alex Crook joined White and Jordan to give us the latest on all of the transfer news. We thought he would be one of the big stories heading into the final days of the window. That's exactly how it's transpiring. Our Saudi correspondent, Ben Jacobs, reporting this lunchtime that Tony has now agreed a deal with Al Ali, 60 million euros over three years. No agreement yet between the two clubs. I think there's still a gap in Brentford's valuation of £50 million and what the Saudis want to pay. But they gave Tony, I understand, a deadline of last night to give a final yes or no before moving on to other targets. And we know seeming suitor from the Premier League. He said yes. Was there? So it's a lot of money. Could Tony really turn money like that down and stay here in the hope that one of the big boys comes in? And so far they haven't. Well, I also, you know, if it's £50 million, pounds, £60 million, Euros, then you're also talking about if he's there for three years, he's probably going to get it tax-free if he stays there for the full three years. So that becomes worth about £80 million, pounds, £85 million, pounds if you're not paying tax on it. I think it's sad. I think it's sad for him that he has got himself into a situation where he's revered as one of the best forwards in competitive football and he's going to go and play in an uncompetitive league. I understand that it's easy for me to turn around and say... But there are certain things that are more valuable. He's still going to earn 10 or 15 million pounds a year playing in English football um, if he were to be transferred somewhere else. I suspect the economics of the deal will benefit lots of people around him. Yeah, 320 um, grand a week. Mm. I mean, he's not going to say no, is he? Well, it depends what you want from football. I mean, if you, if you can get 200,000 pounds a week from playing in Premier League football and have a meaningful football career and play for your country, it depends what you value it at. Mm. If you don't value it that and all you ever were in football for was for money, then off you go to Saudi and playing an uncompetitive league. And I don't, I don't care about all the allure of um, Cristiano Ronaldo. Cristiano Ronaldo had had a stellar career where he'd won everything, done everything, played for everybody of any significance and was fully entitled to go off and get a pension. You know, what, what, what we laughably call a pension with Cristiano Ronaldo, but fully yes. prepared to go. And the same with Messi. Yeah. Not Ivan Tony. Ivan Tony hasn't done very much. He put himself an opportunity to be an England forward. You look back on these, money comes and goes. And, and it's a short career. Yeah, it'll be, it can be, be a short career if you're earning £10 million a year, which he would have been earning if he goes to a Premier League football club. OK, back here, um, Alex, I think Manuel Ugarte. Is it happening at Manchester United? Yeah, certainly looks that way. Busy day expected at Manchester United with Ugarte flying over to undergo his medical. Scott McTominay. Uh, could also today head over to Napoli and undergo his medical. We broke the news at the weekend that a £25 million fee had been agreed between United and Napoli. It was always going to facilitate them stepping up their interest in Agarte. I think this looks a good deal for United. £42 million there or thereabouts up front. Another £8.5 million in add-ons. So they have managed to barter PSG down a bit. They say, sources at Old Trafford, that Agarte has always been their, their main target in midfield. It's their fifth signing. They're all of a similar age bracket as well so they're changing the profile of the squad and I think United are in desperate need of someone to plug that hole in midfield ideally I think they'd probably still rather have sold Casemiro or Christian Eriksen to make it happen but we know bids coming for them McTominay very much the full guy okay so while well, Ivan Tony looks as if he's going to head out of Brentford to the desert in Saudi what about Juan uh, Visa um, who's uh, a teammate of his at Brentford yeah, and he started the first two games of the season in, in Tony's absence. He's got a good partnership with Brian and Bumo. We saw that at the end of last season. Uh, Nottingham Forest, who are struggling 
to get a striker turned down by Eddie Nketiah. They're not at the moment able to get a deal over the line for Santiago Jimenez at Feyenoord. Johan Visser, their latest target, but I've been told in the last few minutes, a £25 million offer has been rejected. And I think it's difficult to see a scenario where Brentford allow Tony to go to Saudi Arabia and sell Johan Visser as well. All right, so there's a bit to go, yeah. Uh, James Ward-Prowse, he's in the news, but why? Yeah, this is one of the main stories in my transfer notebook, uh, which will be published later on the TalkSport website. Obviously, only joined West Ham from Southampton, his boyhood club, last summer after Saints were relegated from the Premier League. I know that was a difficult decision for him at the time, but he felt in order to have a chance of getting back in the, in the England squad, he had to be playing in the top flight. They've been very busy, West Ham, in the market, and it looks like James Ward-Prowse's surplus to requirements there didn't feature at the weekend. He only played 16 minutes the first game of the season. So as they develop the squad for Julian Lopetegui, if an offer comes in between now and Friday, my understanding is they'd be willing to take it. I wonder if Southampton fans would entertain the idea of Ward Prowse returning to St Mary's. Interesting. Uh, I, I was in touch with Dragon Solak, the Southampton owner, over the weekend and uh, maybe halfway through the season we'll do something with him. Anyway, that is then. This is now Jao Cancelo. Let's finish off with him. What's going on? Well, this is another departure from the Premier League to Saudi Arabia. Uh, Jao Cancelo, the, the forgotten man at Manchester City, obviously had that fallout with Pep Guardiola at the start of last season, was sent out on loan. He is back at City, but looks like he'll be off to Saudi as well. Al Hilal, the club that have agreed a €25 million Euro fee, and he's going to net himself €45 million Euros in wages over a three-year contract. Not bad business. And the Joao Cancelo deal has now been rubber-stamped. Uh, the big moves going through today, 30 Kelly Oglu from Fenerbahce to Brighton in a £25 million transfer. Mikel Moreno signing for Arsenal for £27 million from Real Sociedad. And Georgi Mamadashvili, the Valencia goalkeeper. Now that £25 million move to Liverpool that has been talked about for uh, about a week or so has now gone through, although he's not going to be joining until next year. Uh, elsewhere in the Football League, Neda Borges signing for Middlesbrough. Sheikh Charles on loan to Sheffield Wednesday from Southampton. Angelo Ogbonna is a free agent after leaving West Ham's gone to Watford. Gustavo Puerta has signed for Hull. Manu Solomon, the Spurs winger, has gone to Leeds on loan. Now let me bring you up to date with everything that's happening tonight at the moment as things stand. Stoke declared at five at Middlesbrough. Middlesbrough nil, Stoke five, a full-time score. These are the latest scores in the EFL Cup, all with a round and now a play. Barnsley won, Sheffield United nil. Barrow nil, Derby nil. Blackburn won, Blackpool nil. Brighton 2, Crawley nil. But Matt O'Reilly has been injured on his debut. Just six minutes into that game, really poor challenge on the £25 million acquisition, and he's injured his ankle. So Matt O'Reilly off very early on there. Brighton leading Crawley 2 0. Coventry with Brandon Thomas Asante just taking the lead at home to Oxford's 1 0. Everton lead Doncaster 1 0. First goal for the season for Everton, scored by one of their new signings, Tim Iribunum. Fleetwood 2, Rotherham 1. Grimsby 1, Sheffield Wednesday 2. Harrogate 0, Preston 4. Millwall nil, Leighton Orient 1, QPR 1, Luton 1. Remember, those two play again Friday night live here on TalkSport 2. Shrewsbury nil, Bolton 1, Walsall 1, 10 man Huddersfield 2, Watford 1, Plymouth nil, and then Birmingham nil, Fulham 2. That's five minutes into the second half, and we're still waiting for the resumption here at Selhurst, where Crystal Palace are leading Norwich by a goal to nil. And Scott Minto is alongside me. Uh, Scott, the, the Ivan Tony transfer situation is a very interesting one. What would you do if you were Ivan Tony? Would you uh, sacrifice 120 odd grand a week to, to stay in the Premier League? Is, is that asking too much? Are, are we as football fans asking too much of players to do things like that? I know I know you wouldn't. I know you go with the manic now, money joking to you. Oh, but well, <laughs> no, but listen, joking aside, if I was in Ivan Tony's situation, I might well go for the do, money, do you know, so I, I don't begrudge him. Look, first and foremost, we've got to realise that uh, I'm pretty sure he's on the same contract that he was on when he when Brentford got got promoted. So it's not as if he's already on a hundred, hundred and fifty pound a thousand pound a week, and he's been earning that for all these years. That's not the case at all. So this is his final big payout. Now, what? OK, you're being offered 50 million, which is net, which could be 83, 85 million over three years gross. What's the alternative? If there isn't an alternative, then you have no choice. If there is an alternative and Chelsea do come in and offer, say, even half that, then 
I, I still feel it. I, I think it was absolutely right what Simon Jordan said. It would be sad. It would be sad to see him go to a league when he's in his prime, when he's got the chance of becoming the number one centre forward for his country and he's got the chance of taking Chelsea into the top four and beyond over the next few years where, just surprisingly, Chelsea are willing to do that with the philosophy they've had for age. But I think it would be an absolute game changer for Chelsea. I'd love to see him in a Chelsea shirt. Well, that one will run and run you sense towards the transfer deadline itself but of course we'll keep you up to date right here on talk sport 2 and over on talk sport with all of the eventualities two sets of players back out for the second half here at selhurst park and palace out of the trap so quickly in the first period leading courtesy of that second minute goal from canada and we're back underway. No further changes. Both sides are forced to make one the first half because of injury. I'll run through the two teams for you in a moment. Norwich with Kriseni chipping the ball straight out of play uh, for a throw which will be taken on the Palace right. They've got Henderson in goal, Klein, Gahey and Richards, Munoz, Decore, Hughes and Mitchell, Kamada and Eza and Mateta. And here is the goal scorer. Flicked on by Eza. Mateta, right-hand side of the penalty area. Well, it didn't lack for power, but it certainly lacked for precision. The angle was really tight, but he even missed the side netting with the shot. And it ends up sailing into the fans on the far side of the home zone. Yeah, and they really should have hammered that across where Tyreek Mitchell was coming in at the far post. There's no way, I'm sorry, he's going to score from there. Really tight angle. He's off balance. Just hammer it across. And even if it doesn't get to Mitchell... The defender's like facing his own goal. It's a horrible ball for, to try and defend against. Palace have possession back in the uh, midfield with Decore. Uh, Sienac, who's playing up front for Norwich tonight, uh, stuck his foot in. But Eze has won it back. Norwich have long in goal. Fisher, Hanley, Cordoba and Kriseni. And then they've got Nunez and McLean for Scythe, Gibbs, Hernandez and Sienac up front. What's fascinating is that, you know, you looked at that stats of the, the, the first half and Norwich had more possession, 53%. Same amount of goal attempts, just one shot on target less. I think if Palace... As Hughes chips it over the top here, looking for Ezra, who stretched out with his right foot, who's entitled to do that, try and bring the ball down. Long came out bravely, caught it. Uh, the headlong dive towards the edge of his own penalty area. His momentum didn't take him out of the box and it was good goalkeeping. Yeah, I think if Palace can get that second goal, then I think it would just kill the belief that Norwich have. But at this moment in time, they absolutely believe they're in this game. Again, go back to what we were saying, that they're comfortable at the back. They're drawing Palace in, who are wanting that high press, knowing one little misplaced pass and suddenly they're in. But Norwich aren't making those misplaced passes and they're getting through the press of Crystal Palace. It's a fascinating game right now. Uh, second goal for Bolton at Shrewsbury. Dion Charles with it there. 2 0 up. Long with the long ball forward here. It's easily knocked away by Klein, but straight over the line. And out of play for a throw that Ben Kriseni is going to take for Norwich. Turned swiftly around the corner for McLean. First time ball from him. Goes back for Cornerba. Hanley bringing the ball out from his own penalty area into the feet of Nunez then back for Cordoba again Kriseni to McLean didn't really want it that briskly in that kind of position but he very swiftly turned the ball safely back inside his own penalty area no harm done and Norwich will build from the back I like the look of Cordoba as well not only does it look like a, a big strong centre half it would be good at set pieces in both boxes he's a left side central defender very you can see he's got a sweet left foot but he's actually comfortable on the ball in tight situations you know, clearly Norwich, and we spoke about it already, sort of having to really de develop players or find players that, that clubs don't know about. You know, the model, perfect model for them is Brighton and Brentford. That's what, what a lot of clubs are trying to do, and that's what they believe they've got in this Panama centre-half, and it looks decent so far. Yeah, I think reading between the lines, they're, they're trying to, to replicate everything that Brighton are doing. So ball is playing inside the penalty area, and a brisk back header then from Chris Enney. And Long had to very quickly get his left hands out to the side of his body just to stop it, A, from potentially going in, or B, falling for Kamada. But his handling was good. His, the trust from the young fullback in his goalkeeper was assured and uh, justified that. Well, it's a horrible one for the fullback. Been in that situation a million times where you realise you can't really let it go because there's a player behind you just trying to maybe nick it in front of you. But you're also you're so close to the goalkeeper, it's got to go straight at him. 
did well in the end. McLean. Sernac making the run, Gahey mopping up and then just flicking it away from McLean. Four towards Kamada, deft touch from him through the centre circle. Norwich win it back though with Hanley. They're very much in this game now and 15 minutes in, you'd said that they would still be in the game 50 minutes in. I'm not sure I would have agreed with you, but they're very much in it. Here's Cordova, inside the centre circle. To his right hand side for the big bearded Scotsman Grant Hanley Walsall were two down at home to Huddersfield now got it back to 2-2 two, two there now the Terriers down to 10 men uh, Sheffield Wednesday looked as though they might be a victim of a shock tonight they uh, conceded early at Grimsby but they're now 3-1 up Callum Patterson has added the third there they've got just over 10 minutes to go in that George Long picks it up again for Norwich Palace with a really good record in this fixture unbeaten in the last seven meetings since Gary Hooper scored the only goal for the Canaries in a game between these two back in 2013 but Norwich's last win here at Selhurst back in the 1990s here Hernandez tries to get the ball forward inside the area Cernach has chased everything tonight but he's uh, beginning to look weary McLean will bring it forward try to thread it through that one was blocked it falls for Marcelino Nunez and now Norwich go back for Cordoba three million pound man to Criseni he'll work it towards McLean Nunez again increasingly involved now the Chilean to McLean, McLean turning and then Cernach able to turn and again at the edge of the penalty area unleashed a left footed shot Gahey bravely threw himself into the line of fire and was able to block it Ezra will bring it away gets it out towards the Palace left hand side for Mitchell little one-two between the pair of them and it's come off for Scythe last and goes out for a throw that Palace will take in front of the empty blue seats over on the far touchline in the part of the ground on that uh, the old stand on the far side that is normally home fans but it's a, a restricted capacity tonight and Norwich have pretty much sold their allocation the left hand edge of that stand as far as we can see uh, but the rest of that stand still plenty of empty blue seats the ball taken from a throw in front of there to Hughes who works it through the midfield Palace coming again with Mitchell four in the penalty area include Ezra oh great control right footed shot incoming uh, the pirouette was good he didn't get a shot in Decore tries his luck that's blocked and it'll go out of play over the line and Munoz will take a throw quickly well there's two people who need to get on the ball more for Crystal Palace one is Will Hughes he started the game with his first time passing absolutely brilliantly creating a, a couple of chances including the goal and Eze, every time he gets on the ball you know something's going to happen and he's got that again now, clipping it in right-footed. Munoz will bring it down. He's got his back to the direction of play at the moment, but he can feed Klein back for Munoz. Now he's in a crossing position, although he still checks back and goes back to Klein again. Klein playing at centre-half, but making overlapping runs for Munoz. Just giving him that licence to come inside on occasions. Palace changed the line of attack, working it from the right out to the left. Mitchell checking back inside. for Forsyth stood his ground, but there was a coming together between the two. And Palace have a free kick, about eight yards diagonally in from the corner flag over on the far touchline. Not going away, Norwich, are they? Really got that belief that they had after about 10, 15 minutes of the first half. But I'll tell you what, now it's... Palace to see if they can get that second goal they've been very busy since sort of 15 minutes onwards but if they can somehow get that second goal uh, as I say I just feel that Norwich won't believe they can come back from two goals down a live over on TalkSport right now Everton 2 Doncaster 0 Iliman and Jai the former Sheffield United man with his first goal for his new club Watford lead Plymouth 2-0 Ryovic doubling the lead Leicester 3 up at home to Tranmere Wilfred and Didi free kick that Ezra will take Mitchell's inside the six yard box or just on the edge of it there are four slightly deeper about nine ten yards from the goal line Ezra with pace towards the near post he might have taken a flick in front of George Long but he did well to get a right hand to it to steer it over the bar it might have been now view slightly obscured here that it was just a vicious right for in swinging delivery from Ezra nobody got a touch before the goalkeeper or one of his defenders were able to deal with the threat. Yeah, someone got a touch. Difficult to see who it was from where we are. I think it was a, one of the defenders, not the keeper, but wicked ball in for Messi. 
who scored and was very unlucky to have disallowed a magnificent free kick at Brentford on the opening day of the season Hughes with its latest corner that's headed away comes back down towards Ezra again Ezra coming outside the penalty area and just backing off for a moment to give Munoz a, a passing option he finds himself over on the left temporarily Kamada's got it now long raking diagonal ball out towards Mitchell and it sailed over his head into those empty blue seats again and out for a throw to Norwich 1-0 to Palace yeah not a great ball but at least Palace are now you know having the ball more than Norwich and they're able to control the tempo of the game just in the last couple of minutes it's interesting you know we said at the start of the game and especially looking at the teams you know this should be a 2-3-4-0 win for the home side how strong it is and with Norwich making seven changes but that's not been the case at all and Palace very much on the back foot for a lot of this game now need to just control the tempo of it and then create some chances yeah if you're just joining us four changes made by Palace a very strong team picked tonight seven by Norwich from the side that was held at the weekend Black Ball have equalised at Blackburn Jake Beasley scoring that goal at Ewood it's 1-1 with about 15 minutes or so to go in that one. Munoz right in front of us. Good first time ball around the corner. Kamada, and it's deflected away by Cordoba and goes out of play for a second Palace corner. Better, better from Palace. And this is what I was talking about. First of all, they're taking the sting out by having the ball and not Norwich having the ball and the possession. Now they're starting to just get down the sides and create a few more chances. Got a couple of free kicks, corners now. As I say... Norwich just needs to make sure they don't concede this second goal so it's a corner that Hughes stands over uh, the ball has actually been spotted down it's not remotely legal the way that ball is are they going to let him take that no they're not and now he's uh, moved it back with the palm of his left hand and put it down on the quadrant Munoz is showing for the short one uh, he was waved away nobody bought that and it still went to him anyway then an overhead kick comes in from Mateta to double the lead Ball played across the edge of the penalty area. Mateta, 16 yards out. Didn't make the cleanest contact with it. Wasn't the most powerful overhead kick you've ever seen. But it was brilliantly effective. And Mateta is off and running for the new season. Had a blistering end of the last campaign. His first goal of this will take a little bit of beating in his own personal goal of the season competition. Palace 2, Norwich 0. And that should be the Eagles through. You would think so. You would think that Norwich are not able to come back from that. And look, it's a wonderful strike, a great technique. Because the ball was behind him. It wasn't the best of crosses coming in at all. And yet Mateta's found himself on the edge of the box, or maybe 16 yards out. He's had to almost kind of bicycle kick. But he's connected so sweetly that George Long could not get it because it's come in off the post now look I said Palace have just started to be better in the last three four five minutes but Norwich don't really deserve that but it's not about what you deserve it's about how clinical you can be and we talked didn't we you were seeing Palace in the first game of the season I saw Palace on the second both times played well weren't clinical I would say here they haven't played particularly well but they have been clinical guys a great finish from Mateta his 30th goal for the club and it's his 14th in his last 16 games. First of the season for a man who had that fantastic end of last season, had a good Olympics as well, scored in the final, he got a couple in the semi-finals, ultimately a, a silver medal for him and the French. He got a hat-trick in the second round of the League Cup last season. And he scored in the second round of the League Cup this season as well. Mateta with an overhead kick, 2-0. Eza trying an intricate little flick that didn't come off McLean will bring it away and Doyle who's come on for Norwich in the immediate aftermath of that goal will work it back to his goalkeeper George Long and he'll play it forward he's uh, come on for uh, Chris Enney Callum Doyle Norwich get the ball again in the midfield Cernach Cernach out to the right hand side where Fisher's made the run but has done so from an offside position and another change has been made as well for Scythe has come off and he's replaced by Oscar Schwartau the Danish 
midfielder that they signed from Brombu last week. His international clearance only came through this afternoon. And Schwartau is on for his debut. He's a player that they're really excited to have been able to get. He's already scored a, a goal in Europe this season. And he's come on and is uh, playing on the, the left-hand side. 2-0 to Palace. Kamada and Mateta. Now Munoz back for Kamada again. Mitchell's unmarked to the far post. Eza, he'll try the overhead as well. That one was blocked by Cordoba. Goalkeeper might have been struggling. Now Norwich can bring it away. Schwartau, Cernach making a good run forward. He's playing him in, he's onside, he's in the penalty area from a tight angle. And Schwartau on the follow-up after an initial effort was saved. Forces a really good second stop from Henderson. He must have thought he was going to score within two minutes of coming on for his debut. That's an outstanding double stop from Dean Henderson. Brilliant, absolutely brilliant from Henderson. And that's what top keepers do. It didn't, he hasn't had much to do really that the whole game despite Norwich being on the front foot and yet that double save first of all with his right leg and then he gets up really quickly it's almost an open goal and he jumps up as if he scored himself but it's the equivalent of a goal isn't it Palace come forward again ball inside the six yard box and Mateta stretching cornerback just there ahead of him and he got the touch to turn it over the line for a corner something tells me the scoreline's not going to finish this way. I think Norwich is going to go for it. Going to leave some space in behind for Palace. This could be a very open, entertaining last 30 minutes. Now elsewhere, Walsall were two down at home to Huddersfield. They now lead 3-2 with a helic own goal. Wednesday, 4-1 up at Grimsby. Callum Patterson again and Blackpool have turned it around to Blackburn. They were 1-0 down going into the last 20 minutes. They now lead 2-1. Hayden Coulson has put them ahead. This one, 2-0 to Palace. Score from the last corner. What can they do from this one? Hughes, left-footed in, swing inside the six-yard box. Well claimed by George Long. He claims not the tallest goalkeeper, but he came out and took it off the head of Decore. And it was good goalkeeping. So 2-0. Uh, Norwich have had a couple of really good chances. One in each half. One to the the youngster for Scythe in the first half that we've talked about two or three times and then that one moments ago for Schwartau it was a great ball from him initially to find Sienach good first save the second stop from Henderson was a sublime piece of goalkeeper but Jim you're 2-0 down against the Premier League side you're a championship side who has made changes got half an hour to go you simply have to put that in the back of the net if you're going to come away with anything here great save don't get me wrong great double save the second one in particular, got to stick it in the corner, give him no chance to make that save. Everton have got 3 0 up now in their game against Doncaster. That's live for you right now over on Talk Sport. No jeopardy there. Not a huge amount of jeopardy here now that Mateta has acrobatically doubled the lead. It was Beto, incidentally, who scored that third goal for Everton against Doncaster. They're in the final five minutes there. Uh, we're in a a later kickoff here and a long first half because of injury. They've only played 62 minutes. 2-0 to Palace. Good play again by Hughes, as you might have gathered from the, the shout of the Palace fans in front of us. Hughes gets it again now, works it forward towards Decore. Back to Gehi. The Hughes to Gehi. Palace having to try and take the sting out of the potential Norwich fight back here. Over on the right-hand side of midfield, the Corey goes back for Mark Gahey. Kamada drops off into a little pocket of space. He's been followed in there by Gibbs. Klein will pick it up. And now it goes through the middle. Sinach is sort of gravitated out towards the, the right flank now with Hernandez making a run through the middle. Palace had possession back. They've got it with Mitchell. He's pulled it back. Kamada stretching back edge of the air Hughes deflected spins wide out of play for another corner and you know what they needed that because on his left foot it was nicely set back 18 yards out right in front of goal you could easily have seen him stick that in the, the top corner it's good defending in the end from Norwich they don't deserve to go 3-0 down but if they're not careful they could do Well, a big ovation for Palace and for Will Hughes as well as he makes his way across to take this corner. 
didn't have a corner in this game for the opening hour or so. They've had four in quick succession now. Kamada to Hughes and back again. Works square. Eze can shoot, but has blazed it over. Screwed with his left foot. High and wide of the top left-hand corner. Do you know what? I think his first touch was bad, actually, which then sort of let it run towards his left foot. No, his first touch was good, actually. He put it onto his, put his foot on the ball, rolled it across on his left foot, shows the confidence. Left foot, right foot, doesn't really matter. Although the shot wasn't particularly, particularly good. Well, as things stand, 20 minutes into the second half, it does look like being an 18th successive visit to Crystal Palace for Norwich without a victory. Will Hughes has got possession. It's 2-0 to the Eagles. Mateta, the score of the second goal. Space on the left for Mitchell. He's not having to worry about defensive duty too much at the moment. He's on the front foot. Left footed, curved inside the area. Munoz came to meet it. And claims from the home cell that it took a deflection from Munoz's header off Doyle. Are waved away by the referees, given a goal kick. Yeah, Norwich just need to be careful. It's not a 4-3-3 a three, three anymore. It's or 4-2-3-1. Three, three, it, it's like a 4-5-1. And they're not able to press. You're absolutely right. Suratu has come out onto the left-hand side and Andes has gone down the middle. And Cernach has gone on, on the right-hand side. So they're trying to pin Palace back. And at times, the keeper will be going long because it can be three on three. But Hernandez is just not strong enough up against Mark Gerhi. Hanley brings the ball out of his penalty area. Cordoba. Play down towards the youngster, Schwartau. But Ducore wins it back for Palace. And he's played it inside his own half. Preston five up at Harrogate. Brighton three up at home to Crawley. I remember Matt O'Reilly injured very early on in that game. A, a poor challenge. And he's uh, gone off with an ankle injury inside the opening uh, six or seven minutes there. Munoz for Palace. The tackle on him from Doyle. He's on loan from Manchester City, having had a similar spell at Leicester last year. Now Kellen Fisher. Back to Hanley on the edge of his own penalty area for the Canaries. And he's gone square for quarter. But Norwich 20th in the championship. Without a, a league win so far. Uh, just two points from their three games up to this point. In fact, only two away wins in 12 games, stretching back to mid-January in all competitions. So that's something that does need to be sorted out over the course of this season. They got back-to-back -back away games next in the championship. They go to Coventry and then Swansea on the immediate horizon. Here's Hernandez, Gibbs to his left-hand side. Oh, Hernandez has done well. He's used him as the decoy. Very quickly turns back inside, setting up Marcelino Nunez. And he's put it maybe 15 yards wide from 25 yards out. I think that was worse than his shot in the first half as well, wasn't it? it went, to, went about 15 yards over the bar. And you're right, look, it was last season where it was Norwich's home form that, that got them into the playoffs in pre-season. You know, wasn't particularly good in terms of results-wise. Start of the season with Oxford loss, no. But I think Blackburn would be disappointed they didn't see that game out and win. Sheffield United, they were much better tonight. You can see exactly what the plan is, what the philosophy is. I think they've played very well. There's a lot of confidence they can take from this game. They're up against a team that hasn't made many changes from what is a Premier League side and has got some internationals in it as well. So I, I, I like what I've seen from Norwich. I don't think anyone's expecting top six, but we'll see. Oh, lovely ball. Eza picking it up. Mateta, 3-0. Pulled back by Eza. And Mateta almost had the freedom of the penalty area. He just dropped off. The Norwich defenders went back. He had four or five yards of space. And he's lashed it left-footed into the top right-hand corner. That is that. And Mateta has a quick fire brace. Palace three, Norwich nil. It's not a 3-0 game, but it actually doesn't matter because it's about being clinical. Again, we've talked about it in the Premier League so far. Palace haven't been clinical. Tonight, they really have. I don't think they've played particularly well. And Norwich can argue they've been the better side in terms of controlling the game and midfield. But it's all about sticking the ball in the back of the net. And that's fantastic forward play. First of all, realising, well done, Eze, down the left-hand side and, and whipping the ball back. But everyone, the Norwich defenders, just dropping off, trying to get close to the goal. Mateta finding space by just standing still. 
and it was a really good finish in the end on his left foot great strike giving long no chance whatsoever it's not a 3-0 game but Palace fans absolutely delighted with the scoreline well Crystal Palace will make a triple change on the back of that third goal Saar Lerma and Wharton for Camada Decore and Hughes so another chance for Ismail Assar, who might have expected his full debut for the Eagles tonight, but it wasn't forthcoming. The £13 million pound signing from Marseille. He comes on for his first League Cup tie in five years. And Adam Wharton left out of the starting lineup for the first time in 18 Palace games in all competitions. And he's on as well. And so to Jefferson Lerma. Brighton 4, Crawley nil. Marco Mani has uh, scored. Striker with a really good reputation, a youngster. Uh, Brighton 4 up in their local derby with Crawley. Uh, here's uh, Cordoba inside his own penalty area. Hits it left-footed towards halfway. Easily brought down by Mitchell. Can turn away from Sinach. Ezra closed down quickly by McLean. He's still got it over the top. Sa over! When he raced in his mind of Saar, Long came out, and Saar had to get a first touch just to flick it over the goalkeeper, who's so close to goal, really, that it was never likely to come down in time, and it ends up just kissing the roof of the net on his way over the bar and how to play for a goal kick. Well, do you know what? He's really unlucky. From the moment he's come on, Jim, I wanted to get in that. I thought he made a real difference when he came on at the weekend. He looked really direct, pacey. And, and struggled or, or troubled should I say the, the West Ham defence and you can see the timing of the run there was perfect he was unlucky because he he connected well but to get it up and down in a space of what eight yards very difficult to do but what about that ball from Eze I mean it was just nonchalant wasn't it just thinking it over the top brilliant play he's such a good player to watch play Eze I would never grow tired of watching it. And he's, it's his style, really, rather than what he does. He, he's got that again now, turning so easily to Mitchell with a left-footed effort. And that one's blocked. So do you know what he's really good at? Not only is he really good at the difficult things, but he's also just knows when to play it simple, just like he did there, realising, OK, do you know what? I'm playing really well at the moment, but actually the first time ball to Tyreek Mitchell it is the better thing to do. I remember when he was at QPR and when sort of COVID happened and I was working for Sky and we, we said, like, okay, well, let's do something a little bit different. So we worked on a, a team of the championship and I was the only one who had Eze in there because I saw the talent that he had. And it was brilliant, actually. And I love the story as well of him being knocked back by lots of clubs. Schwart out the other end, left-hand side of the penalty area, waiting for somebody to arrive. It's Cernach that was coming in at the far post. Mitchell can get that one away. You know, he's, he's a perfect example to any footballer in terms of setbacks, resilience, work hard at your skills, never give up. And look where he is now. He's an England international and we'll have to wait and see. Palace fans won't want to hear it, how long he's going to be a Palace player for. But he just knows when to play, when to do the difficult thing. He's almost impossible to mark when he's really on form. Uh, Sheffield Wednesday 5-1 up at Grimsby now Leicester lead Tramia 4-0 Harry Winks Everton are through they've beaten Doncaster by three goals to nil Brighton for Crawley nil uh, Jack Rolls sent off for Crawley late in that game Sheffield Wednesday have won that game at Grimsby 5-1 long with a clearance the Norwich goalkeeper hit the nearest Palace player but it's a ricochet Callum Doyle's way he can bring it forward through the midfield a very deft little touch from him took Lerma out of it a Sienach not necessarily expecting the straight one that side of Richards and the American could recover and get there and smuggle it back to his goalkeeper and now Palace can build from the back and they'll get it forward and Ezra just glides past the first challenge Fisher faces him up now and he's just stopping almost dancing with the ball at his feet Abera Chiesa now to Mitchell to Mateta who scored twice is he going to be able to get a round two hat trick in this competition for a second successive season ball goes back for Lerma Lerma's 15 yards inside Norwich territory a quick exchange of passes with Chris Richards a reminder that coming up, your chance to react to all of tonight's Carabao Cup action, but also 
all the big transfers that have gone through today. Sports bar open for business with Jamie O'Hara and Jermaine Pennant. 03717 on Talk Sport from 10. Here's Mateta. Ezra trying to play him in again. And then Ezra continuing to put the pressure on Nunez, who could dig it clear from the edge of the D, inevitably, for Palace to bring it forward once more. Now they've got inside the centre circle with Gahey. Gahey out of the Palace left. Richards, Fleetwood have beaten Rotherham by two goals to once. A League Two side beating at League One opposition tonight. And certain Rotherham player. Now to my right hand side shakes his head ruefully. Here's Munoz down the line. Uh, well dealt with by Dole will be able to get it away. Scott? Yeah, I'd have to see the team that, that started. If it was a. The first team, very disappointing. That is a, a shock for sure. If it wasn't, then, OK. Promotion is, is the aim. As it is for Charlton in League One as well. Well, Charlton have got to have a decent chance of doing it, you'd think. Well, I, I thought top ten before the start of the season, but it's been an excellent start for them. Uh, good ball for Saar. Right-hand side of the box, Munoz. He's trying to roll it towards the penalty spot where Mateta was waiting. Wharton can now take over. Back from him to Klein. Adam Wharton turning again. Another right on top of his game, playing with confidence and trying to pirouette his way inside the area. Munoz then won it back from Doyle and bounces the ball into the ground in frustration after the free kick is given against him. And as a result of that, he gets a yellow card, the first of the night for descent. Yeah, it's a shame, but I was actually just thinking, you know, it's Carabao Cup early on, 3-0, and yet still the, the Premier League side are really going at it, not happy, the fans are not happy for fouls given away that they don't believe was a foul. I mean, in a sense, this is English football at its best. George Long inside the six-yard box, plays it to the left-hand side for Cordoba. Cordoba getting it forward. Lerma trying to control it. Spartau could, and he'll bring it away now through the centre circle, out to the right-hand side for Fischer, the young fullback. Back for Spartau. Fischer's still up there, and he just tried to pirouette with the ball on the edge of the penalty area, but Mitchell can get it away. Can't get it too far clear. Might break an and way inside the box. Still Norwich looking for a consolation here. Plenty of blue and red shirts back goal side, so he couldn't get a shooting chance in. Then it's worked out towards the right-hand side of the area and across is blocked. Mateta's back defending, and Mitchell will be able to get it away. But his clearance isn't the best. Spartau can take over. He's inside the penalty area. Hernandez couldn't get it from his right foot to his left. Palace again, half clear. Cordoba will take over. Cordoba to Nunez. 3-0 Palace leading here. Hamilton in the opening moments of the game before Mateta scored twice in a 10-minute spell in this second half. 3-0 to Palace. They're going through. We've got 13 minutes to go. That's a good play again by Sienac inside the penalty area, but he couldn't find Schwartau. Now Fisher will take over. Pull back from him. Gibbs can't get a shot in. Schwartau might, and in just playing the ball forward, Wharton was there, and he can calmly bring it away. Ezra then was fouled. Wharton, after the referee played the advantage, fires one over the top. But Callum Doyle is back, and he can clear for Norwich. Yeah, good defending from Cordova there. Just realised the ball was going to go over the top, and Mateta, I think he knows, you know, he's quick. And he probably, if it's level, he may have really sprinted for it. But the fact that Cordoba just dropped off three or four yards, he realised he had no chance. Norwich aren't giving up, though, are they? They're showing good character. They're trying to get a goal, trying to give their travelling fans who are singing, realising they quite liked what they've seen in terms of performance, just not in terms of result. Now wins for Coventry and Leicester and Brighton and Watford all safely through. Wins to nil in all of those games. Another change for Palace and the hugely popular Joel Ward comes on. His 13th season as a Crystal Palace player and he's replaced Munoz. Yeah, he's been a great servant for the club, hasn't he? I think he's still there just because he is a, a great captain in the dressing room. And also a very good squad player. You know, what Palace hap what happened to them last season where they got knocked out the Cups pretty early. It looked like they were just fighting relegation. 
I remember interviewing for Talk Sport, Dean, so Dean Henderson. And it was like, what's left to play for? Look at them now. Lerma getting it forward. Ezra couldn't receive the ball. Fisher guiding it back to his goalkeeper. Uh, the the usenage you heard there for a moment after Mateta with another sublime flick completely changed the line of the Palace attack and took two or three Norwich players out of the picture in the process. Yeah, and I remember Roy Hodgson made a, a couple of substitutions in the Cups because it was a big league game coming up, which the fans and understandably so weren't happy. You don't get the feeling that Glasner's going to do the same thing. Obviously very early on in the Carabao Cup, but the strong side that he's picked, I think he realises if they can get to mid-table again, get anywhere near what they did last season in terms of the finish with the likes of Elise and Anderson and who knows about Mark Erhi gone. But just go deeper in the Cups. That's what Palace fans want. They want to see their team going for it. Every season they've had in this quite long spell of Premier League football now, They've finished with a points tally in the 40s, somewhere between 10th and 16th, so they've never had a bottom four finish. The, the one season that they finished in the bottom five, there was very little doubt that they were going to stay up, and they got to the cup final that year. Barnsley beaten Sheffield United tonight by a golden nil. Barrow against Derby's gone to penalties. QPR against Luton has also gone to penalties. And the news from both of those shootouts live view right now over on talk sport here on talk sport 2 tomorrow night forest against newcastle and the former newcastle man nobby solano is amongst the guests on breakfast tomorrow morning with alan brazil and ali mccoist from six and finney jones is going to be joining the guys as well now that forest newcastle game kicking off at eight tomorrow night west ham bournemouth at 7 45 over on talk sport tomorrow night as again we bring you a choice of live listening on the talk sport network now this one all over by the shouting although norwich have been game they've certainly not given up and they're keeping their footballing principles as they try and add a semblance of respectability to the score line it's been a better night than perhaps the the raw score would suggest yes. yeah well, for sure for sure i think if anyone who hasn't seen the game Let's say, oh, they've been soundly beaten there. Well, I don't think that was the case. At 1 0, they were very much in it. First half, I thought they were excellent. I really did. You know, that miss early on from Forsyth was, was a massive one. And then a double chance as well at 2 0. But fair play to Palace. They're controlling the game now. Once they, I said once they get the second, it'll be it. And the third came quite soon after. And everyone can just relax knowing that they are through to the next round. Uh, Bolton through, they've won at Shrewsbury. Two championship sides knocked out at home by League One opposition tonight. Blackburn have gone down at home to Blackpool. Millwall have been beaten at home by Leighton Orient tonight. Ball from Joel Ward, a high, long ball over the top. Uh, he's looking to try and bring Mitchell into play and it's drifted out for a Norwich throw. I'll tell you what's interesting as well, that Mark Gerhi's still out there, you know? With days away from the end of the transfer window, we'll have to wait and see what is it, four or five bids Newcastle have already put in or they're on the verge of? I think it's four in and, the, and a fifth is incoming. I incoming, think. OK. We'll wait for that inbox and see what the number is. And yet, Glasner, no, you stay out there. They've won the game against the championship side who have made seven changes. You're through to the next round, barring an absolute miracle. And yet, he's still out there. Uh, Norwich are going to make a final double change with Jack Stacey and Boyer Sites coming on. So those are the two players that have come on for Norwich for the uh, blast of six, seven minutes or so. Marcelino Nunez is one of the players that has gone off. I'm sorry, I didn't catch who the other one was will be able to figure it out relatively quickly it may well have been Fisher over on that far touch line the ball is uh, out of play and Palace take a throw back it goes for Adam Wharton in the midfield no it's not Fisher he's still out there it's uh, Mitchell waiting on the left hand touch line Wharton has uh, played it back instead for, for Jefferson Lerma down towards Richards Richards to Mark Gahey he can turn it forward towards Wharton 
Now then, Wharton is 10 yards inside the uh, Norwich half, gets it forward towards Eze. Eze just sauntering forward again, edge of the air, it's opening up for him, on his right foot, oh, what a goal! He has passed the ball into the net. He's gone past five or six inside the penalty area, going from left to right, and then he's given the goalkeeper the eyes and kind of scuffed it back towards the bottom left-hand corner. Palace leading Norwich by four goals to nil. Well, if anyone who hasn't seen this and is just listening to it, please, at some point over the next 24 hours, watch this goal. This is literally a 15-year-old playing against an under-11s. He comes inside, past one, he's past two, he's past three, and then he just, as you say, gives the keeper the eyes. There's a little bit of a deflection, but he knows exactly what he's doing. And wow, it's amazing. George Long claiming his uh, offside. At... Did it come off Mateta? But anyway, brilliant for Meze. Absolutely fantastic. What a player. Yeah, some goal back. And it's been a, a flamboyant attacking performance at times, Palace. They play with a swagger when they're in this kind of mood. Now, Queen's Park Rangers have beaten Luton on penalties. Barrow have beaten Derby on penalties. So that's a championship side going out away to League Two opposition at Holger Street tonight. Barrow through and Queen's Park Rangers through in their shootout as well. 4-0 Palace lead here. Norwich bringing forward Boyer Sainz. Chance for him to run at Richards who can repel that first run. Sainz has it again. And he's just coming in off the right-hand touchline. Laying the ball through the midfield towards Liam Gibbs. Now we go back towards Hanley. Hanley inside the centre circle. Cornerback to Doyle. Played by Doyle. Back to his goalkeeper, George Long. And now work forward towards uh, Kenny McLean again. And so Kamina, a Mateta brace, and Ezra. 4-0 to Palace. And Gibbs is in possession for Norwich. We talked about the fact that there are positives for Norwich tonight, but we've had the start that they've had. One win in 10 in all competitions, and you lose 4-0. What psychological effect does that have going into Coventry away and Swansea away? Well, I think it's going to be really interesting to see what Johannes Hof Turup actually says after the game and, and how he prepares for the, the game against Coventry because there are a lot of positives to take from this but if he sees the lads who have literally lost confidence by losing 4-0 and not having the best of starts of the season then he should worry a little bit but I, I, I still think that they, they've been beaten by they were, it was 1-0 they were well in the game and suddenly bang bang 3-0 they're out of it and that can happen a brilliance or a bit of brilliance from, from Meze to make it 4 this is not a 4-0 game. It's really not. So I, I think they should take the positives. I, I don't think they'll be overly bothered by it. But yeah, certainly they could do with a, a win sooner or later, for sure, just to give them a little bit of confidence. Boy Science goes back for Grant Hanley. Uh, now Kenny McLean. Incidentally, was seeing that. She was the, uh, the other Norwich player who went off in that double change that saw uh, Science and Stacey come on. Cordoba is in possession. He's 10, 15 yards inside his own half. 4-0, Palace leading Norwich here on TalkSport 2. Mark Gahey with the ball at his feet, but play is going to be pulled back because of a poor challenge by Jefferson Lerma. He's fouled Fisher, and Lerma is in the book. Second Palace player booked tonight. Now you don't really want to get booked in only 4-0 up. And yet, you know, in one sense, OK, it's a professional foul. have gone past him. But no, you don't make it. It's, it's a lazy tackle, really. One it doesn't quite seem at the, the pace of the game yet. He's been on for, for some time. But you don't want to get booked in a situation like this. 4-0 up, coasting. Now McLean for Doyle. Cornerback into the feet of McLean. And then Gibbs goes back for Hanley. Hanley to cornerback. Norwich seeing out time here, really. Uh, fate long decided you know, a rare second round elimination for them it's uh, going to keep a, an impressive Palace record going haven't been beaten in 90 minutes in a League Cup tie here at Selhurst for 
more than a decade now since they lost to Newcastle back in 2014 here's Doyle Doyle getting it forward the youngster Spartau had a really good opportunity to score within a, a couple of minutes after coming on Fisher back out of the right hand side for Stacey and Fisher getting it forward again it's Gibbs turning the ball over in the midfield now Callum Doyle Doyle down to the Norwich left hand side for Sainz Sainz turn around the corner past Klein out towards Hernandez Hernandez can't find a way through and it's out for a throw that'll be taken on the Norwich left 4-0 yeah, as I say you know, Palace the win was pretty much determined some time ago I think it was at 2-0 I mean, a lot of substitutions, ha substitutions have been made from Glass, and they're just really surprised to see both Eze and Mark Gerhi on the pitch. You know, we, let's just say they are going to be Palace players after the transfer window closes. You still want to make sure they're nice and fit and fresh. Big game at Stamford Bridge, of course, at the weekend. And Norwich coming forward again, looking for a consolation. Fisher fouled five yards outside the penalty area, right of centre. And Norwich do have a stoppage time opportunity to be able to get themselves a consolation goal the fourth official Gavin Ward has got the numbers board in his hand and it's three additional minutes I think both sides would have been happy if that said one but it is going to be three <laughs> yeah. and this late Norwich chance to get themselves as I say a consolation absolutely what was that law they were thinking of the when the team's like 3-4 the game's done and dusted like just do us all a favour do the both teams a favour and keep it low I think that's what he's done there hasn't he yeah particu particularly in a cup tie yeah yeah in a league fixture and you're playing for goal difference it, it might be different but in a cup tie absolutely it's done and dusted isn't it scoreline yeah, it doesn't matter now if it's 3-4 or 5 so the first chance for Norwich City to see the set piece array here of Oscar Schwartau, it's in a really good position for a right-footed free kick. It's five yards right of centre, and it's seven yards outside the penalty area. Almost position A. Five in the Palace wall, two Norwich players stand to the left-hand side of that wall as we look at it, trying to obscure the keeper's view. He sent it straight into the quintet of red and blue striped shirts in that Palace wall and Ez is going to be able to bring it away but he's given it away Schwartau back for Stacey clipped inside the penalty area but Richards can head that away and then Ezra just glides outside the penalty area to find Mateta Mateta still hoping for the opportunity to complete his hat trick loses out to Hanley but Wharton wins it back Saar with the reverse ball and Mateta just didn't read and Norwich quickly have it back again in the midfield well there were three Palace players there and yet he's passed it to the one Norwich player in the vicinity <laughs> It's a great opportunity for a counter-attack. And you're right, Mateta will be thinking, I've got a chance of a hat-trick if he's a good striker, which he certainly was in the second half of last season. He'll be thinking, yeah, I want to get a hat-trick here. And which he's been in the second half of this game. Sublime overhead kick to make it 2-0 and then lashing one in from 12 yards out to make it three before Hezza's brilliant, clever run and a disguised shot to wrong foot everybody for four after Canada had opened the scoring in the second minute Norwich had isolated chances it won't say it could have been different the scoreline certainly could have been different I uh, don't think anybody would say that Palace don't deserve to be relatively comfortable winners tonight but it's it's not felt like a 4-0 no it hasn't Norwich were, were very good after going a, a goal down in the first half and if anything, I thought it should have been level, but second half, Palace definitely stepped up and absolutely been clinical. Schwartau. Just emerging outside the centre circle. Joel Ward trying to stay with him. Hasn't been able to. Schwartau flicking it off to his left-hand side for Hernandez. This is the last attack of the game. Fisher getting in inside the penalty area. Gibbs will try and take it on. Gahey defends it well. And there won't be any time to take the goal kick. Job very well done by Crystal Palace, who've led for all but the opening 97 seconds tonight. They love a cup run here. They've only won two League Cup ties in five years prior to tonight. They've never reached the final of this competition. But if they can play irrepressible attacking football like they have tonight, 
They have a little bit of luck in running with the draw as well. You just never know. They are glad all over tonight. That was an excellent attacking performance from the second half. It was in second half for sure. And look, there's a lot of boxes ticked. They got the first win of the season, albeit in the Carabao Cup and against the Championship side. Kamada's got his first goal. You know, Mateta's got two, but Everese, I mean, just how good is this kid? He's just unbelievable. And he didn't have to score that weldy to show what a top-class talent he is. Palace have to keep him. I'm sure they will. It's going to be fascinating to see how they do. And especially if Eddie Nketiah comes in and how they're going to manage that with, with Mateta as well. The fact he scored goals towards the end of last season and has got two tonight. But yeah, glad all over for sure. Uh, these are the full-time scores then in the EFL Cup here. Palace beating Norwich 4-0. Elsewhere, Middlesbrough nil, Stoke 5. Barnsley 1, Sheffield United 0. Barrow 0, Derby 0. Barrow won that on penalties. Blackburn 1, Blackpool 2. Brighton 4, 10-man Crawley 0. Matt O'Reilly picking up a really bad injury in that game. Coventry 1, Oxford 0. Everton 3, Doncaster 0. Fleetwood 2, Rotherham 1. Grimsby 1, Sheffield Wednesday 5. Harrogate 0, Preston 5. Millwall 0, Leighton Orient 1. QPR 1, Luton 1. QPR 1 on penalties. Shrewsbury 0, Bolton 2. Walsall 3, Huddersfield 2. Watford 2, Plymouth 0. And Birmingham 0, Fulham 2. One game as well in the EFL Trophy tonight. Crew 5, Liverpool's youngsters 1. Tomorrow night, a double bill for you. West Ham, Bournemouth and Forest, Newcastle. The game at West Ham, a 7.45 kickoff on Talk Sport. Forest, Newcastle, an 8 o'clock kickoff on Talk Sport 2. Build-up starts at 7. All of the goals as they go in and around the grounds on the TalkSport network tomorrow night. Scott Minto, thank you very much for your company tonight. Thank you, mate. Hugely enjoyable game here at Selhurst Park. And we'll have reaction from both camps within the sports bar over on TalkSport as well. 03717-22-3344 is the number that gets you through. That's on TalkSport next. But next up here on TalkSport 2... Fight Night Extra with Adi Oladipo and Gareth A. Davis. Good night.